Marquez has died in Mexico, he was 87. Ed Donahue has a look at the life of the writer. He was known to millions as Gabo. His work spawned comparisons with Mark Twain and Charles Dickens and outsold everything published in Spanish except the Bible. Garcia Marquez's epic 1967 novel, 100 Years of Solitude, sold more than 50 million copies in more than 25 languages. His novels became synonymous with Latin America itself. President Obama says the world has lost one of its greatest visionary writers. Colombian President Juan Manuel Santos said a thousand years of loneliness and sadness for the death of the greatest Colombian of all time. I'm Ed Donahue. And that's the news for Radio VR in Washington. I'm Rick Young. From the creation of the Bible in 1912 by a struggling Baltimore book salesman to the day in 1493 when Christopher Columbus and his crew looked back on their voyage and realized what they truly discovered was themselves. The Onion looks back at This Week in History. On July 21st, 1969, astronaut Neil Armstrong became the first human to set foot on the surface of the moon. The f moon, for Christ's sake. This is Tranquility Base. The Eagle has landed. Jesus H. Christ, Houston, we're on the f***ing moon, over. Roger, Tranquility, we copy that. We cannot believe you are on the f***ing moon. I'm descending the ladder. Just one more step and I'm holy living f I absolutely am standing on the surface of the f***ing moon. Jesus H. Christ in a chicken basket. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up whatever you want. Just dial toll-free. 855-450-FREE is the number, and that is brought to you by ProXPN. That's 855-450-3733. With you tonight, it's Ian. Oh, you know what? I should turn Ellen's microphone on. That would help. Try Ellen. <laughs> and Daryl. Ellen and Daryl joining me. And, of course, you can join us on the phones or on Skype. The Skype username LRN.FM. We're actually going to go right out the gate to skype where todd is on the line in michigan todd you're on free talk live with ian ellen and daryl hey ian it's been quite a while since i've last talked to you todd what's on your mind tonight uh, yeah hey daryl hey uh everybody um well i just submitted show prep for you guys tonight uh which you i don't know if you've taken a good look at it yet or had any time but uh, it's regarding Christopher Cantwell's open letter to the Free State Project Board that he posted on his website. Now, I saw and, this a few uh, days ago. The uh, I guess the, the gist of it is that he would like to be invited again to Porkfest. He has been uninvited, as I understand it, from the Porcupine Freedom Festival. This is due to some controversy over some remarks that he made on a previous blog post last year that suggested killing police if i'm recalling correctly as uh, something That's that correct. was in, as something that was inevitable uh for the liberty movement government officials yeah and uh the and the free state project has a specific prohibition on advocacy of violence uh, of course chris will make the he would defend himself by saying that he was only talking about in in defense but at the same time, he also made it sound like that was inevitable and that was something that should happen at, at some point. So they asked him to um, to correct. They asked him to change what he had said in his article. He refused to do that. They then informed him that he would be uh, disassociated from the Free State Project. He would have his membership or his uh, participation within the project revoked and would be uninvited from the Porcupine Freedom Festival. And I guess he was trying to somehow make amends with the Free State Project, but I guess uh, right. that didn't pan out. Yeah, I, um, I know that George Donnelly on his show was, tr was actually, uh, believe it or not, interviewing one of the Free State Project board trustees on there. And I guess this was some time ago. I don't recall when exactly he put this up. But uh, apparently 
she gave the reasons why she sent out the letter to uh, Chris and um, and Cantwell in his open letter basically stated that well she's just basically calling him a domestic terrorist because so Todd uh, what's your interest in all this I mean really it just seems like a lot of drama and not really necessary to really even talk about it so what's why are you interested in this well it's it's been a, a very big concern of mine lately what from what I've seen um, his comments that he has um, made, you know, in his uh, writings and so forth. And I why is uh, it such a concern? I mean, he's he's no different from thousands of other uh, people out there. The you know, the kind of the gun polisher types who are always talking about violence okay. and how it's going to come to violence someday and that they're preparing for taking the cops out before they take them out and you know that kind of rhetoric i mean what's what makes him so you know unusual or worthy of your attention well let's put it this way um it gives the wrong impression that a lot of us are just well let's just kill um the agents first and then uh, before they start killing us and this is the perception that's that's being floated around and i just don't like the idea of that perception being floated around particularly in the movement i mean you, you're, you're free to disagree with but that aren't you time. i mean basically giving him more uh, i mean we weren't going to talk about chris cantwell tonight so giving him more publicity right you just you know opened up a radio show by talking about him doesn't that essentially bring more attention to the ideas well, that you find disturbing and upsetting well, sometimes it's better to bring these ideas into the like public view so that we can dispel any myths there are about it. Like maybe, I agree. maybe he was just talking about self defense, maybe not particularly against police officers, but including them as well. Well, he'll usually make a statement like that, but the way that Cantwell writes it is it comes off pretty. It almost sounds like he's advocating people go out and kill cops, but he kind of skirts around actually saying that. Um, he usually will put in terms like only in self-defense or something like that. But the people that tend to come from that perspective usually believe that it's open season because, well, the police are always aggressing against people. They're they're paid for with stolen money, and therefore, yeah. you know, that's aggressive because stolen funds. So I agree, Ellen, that I don't have a problem addressing this issue. I mean, we've talked about violence countless times on Free Talk Live over the years and will again because there's always something in the news. If it's not Chris Cantwell stirring up drama, there's always something happening somewhere where you know there, there's an appropriate comment to be made about how peace is the answer, that if you want peace, that has to be your means uh, to get to that end, that kind of thing. But ultimately, I mean, you're well, you're giving him more attention specifically to him. I mean, you... Uh, the, by calling in like this, Todd. Well, he does have a, a large well, following already. Does he have well, a large following? I mean, I, I guess he's in about his own all, words. He does. That's what he says, and he does have about as many likes as Freekeen dot com, which he's had a website for about a year. So, I mean, maybe that is an indicator. And it is certainly true that there are a lot of people like Chris, which is why I said that you know his perspective isn't unusual. It's fairly common. Well, I would um, – okay, I, I understand where you're coming from, Ian, but the but here's the problem, though, is that, um, you know, because he writes these kinds of articles, and I understand where he's coming from on one end. Yeah, there's going to come a point where we're going to have to aggress towards the state if it really came down to it as a last resort. But – the problem, um, the reason I, I bring it up on the show tonight is because, well, um, you, um, I, in fact, several days ago, I remember you made the point uh, about the 10 reasons why libertarians were, are, are mean to people um, that Cantwell wrote, the article that he wrote. Mm -hmm. And you were bringing attention to that. You were trying to give him more publicity on that. So 
Um, so I think that, yeah. you know. Well, I mean, we thought that was an I, interesting I, discussion. I, mean, I think you're fair uh, game that, on that one. I think you're fair game on that one because if I'm fair game for bringing that Todd, up. Todd, I didn't say that, uh, that there was anything necessarily inherently wrong with bringing it up. It's just that you made it sound like you didn't think Chris Cantwell should get attention, and so therefore – why bring him up? Uh, we brought that up because it was an interesting topic of discussion. So I'm not saying that you shouldn't bring Chris, Chris Cantwell up. Uh, it's just that if your position is that you don't want him to get attention, then you shouldn't bring him up. And I thank you for the call tonight. appreciate hearing from you. At 855-450-FREE, that's 855-450-3733. And it's actually uh, it's an interesting coincidence that he happens to bring that up, Daryl, because you have a story tonight about the so-called non-aggression principle, yes, which you know people like Chris Cantwell seem to hold fairly dear. This is sort of the the kind of classic libertarian principle that underlies a lot of libertarian thought, and that is that one should not aggress, one should not uh, begin to attack, one should not you know one can defend oneself, but one right. should not start the fight so to speak, or go after somebody with violence or the threat of violence in order to achieve what it is they're looking for in life. And, you know, on its surface, this sounds like a fairly good principle to adopt. But unfortunately, it does tend to lead some people to this belief that, well, once I've been aggressed against once, then I have the right to just go ahead and start blasting uh, any old time I want to. So, you know, in the case of uh, the police, well, because they're, they've aggressed against you by pulling you over at some point, or they've arrested a friend of yours or something like that, that then, you know, a week later, you have the right to go and bomb a police station or start, you know, shooting at cops. And I think that that's a pretty dangerous thing. Uh, maybe the, maybe you're saying I'm taking it to an absurd level. Well, let's get into your story coming up, Daryl. It is the, what is it, six reasons? Six reasons that libertarians should reject the non-aggression principle. What's the source on this one? Libertarianism.org. Well, that sounds official. Let's get into that here. Coming up moments, 855-450-FREE. And you can bring up what you want here on Free Talk Live. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of... Where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I am is uh, because... I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your AMP will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. Hi, this is Mark Edge, host of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the very economic engine that powers this country. With a printing press tethered to Washington politicians, bureaucrats, and central bankers, how can we put our trust in paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Come see gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold. With Washington, D.C. delivering more debt and printed promises, common sense tells us the future of the trend is obvious. Everyone listening should visit gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938. I trust Midas Resources for my gold, silver, platinum, and you can too. Again, I want you to have this book, and it's free. It's gold.freetalklive.com or 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. Immigrating to the Shire was easy. I was instantly plugged into a community of individuals who also care about peace, liberty, and justice and are willing to do something about it. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. 
It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here. And I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at LRN.FM? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the Internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. Every day you make investment decisions. When you do business with and hold U.S. dollars, you make an investment in the soundness of the moral philosophy and the potential longevity of the United States hegemony. People who claim a monopoly on violence around the world. If this is the investment that you want to make, please keep listening to LRN.FM. If not, stop using their currency. Use bitcoins. Get educated. We use coins.com. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up whatever you want. Just dial toll-free to 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And we also have Skype. You Skype right on in to the show at lrn.fm. You do need to send a contact request first. It'll only take you a moment, and when you do that, we'll approve it, and it'll be good to go from that point on into the future. You know, if you've made the commitment to invest hundreds in an alarm system, why would you not spend about $60 more to permanently reinforce the doors uh, in your home or a door in your home, which are the very place that burglars are statistically most likely to attack? Adding an alarm system but not fortifying the doors is analogous to spending years on building the castle, installing a moat, and fortifying the keep only to leave the drawbridge down when the horde of barbarians show up. It just doesn't make sense. Adding door devils to your home shores up a critical vulnerability that alarms just cannot address. Many alarms are recommended uh, and one of the best burglary deterrents, but they don't stop people kicking in your door, banging in your door. Burglars know that doors provide up to two minutes uh, delay to enter the security code before the alarm is tripped. Therefore, they don't care as they will be in and out under two minutes anyway. Uh, you can go and learn more over at uh, Door Devil's website, which uh, was not included on this copy, unfortunately. <laughs> So I'll get that information from you here in a little bit. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And uh, we're talking about the non-aggression principle, uh, which you have a story, Daryl, about the six things. Six reasons, six reasons that libertarians should reject the non-aggression principle. This is from Matt Zwolinski over at libertarianism.org. And he begins by writing, many libertarians believe that the whole of their political philosophy can be summed up in a simple, single principle. This principle, the non-aggression principle, or NAP, holds that aggression against the person or property of others is always wrong, where aggression is defined narrowly in the terms of use of force or threat of physical violence. From this principle, many libertarians believe the rest of libertarianism can be deduced as a matter of mere logic. What is the proper li libertarian stance on minimum wage laws? Aggression, therefore wrong. What is the libertarian stance on anti-discrimination laws? The same. Aggression, therefore wrong. Schools, roads, you get the idea. 
The libertarian, armed with the nap, has little need for the close study of history, sociology, or empirical economics. With a little logic and a lot of faith in this basic axiom of morality, virtually any political problem can be neatly solved from the armchair. On its face, the NAP's prohibition of aggression falls nicely in line with common sense. After all, who doesn't think it's wrong to steal someone else's property, to club innocent people over the head, or to force others to labor for one's own profit? Or rather, for one's own private benefit. Or to kick in someone's front door. By the way, you can go and get Door Devil at DoorDevil.com. That's what I thought it was, but I didn't want to speculate. So there you go, DoorDevil.com. And if it's wrong for us to do these things as individuals, why would it be any less wrong for us to do them as a group, as a gang, a club, or even as a state? But the NAP's plausibility is superficial. It is, of course, common sense to think that aggression is a bad thing, but it is far from common sense to think it is badness or rather to think its badness is absolute such that the wrongness of aggression always trumps any possible consideration of justice or political morality. There is a vast difference between a strong but defensible presumption against the justice of aggression and an absolute universal prohibition. And now he gets into the six reasons that libertarians should reject the non-aggression principle. Okay. The NAP prohibits all pollution. Rothbard recognized that industrial pollution violates the NAP and therefore must be prohibited. But Rothbard did not draw the full implications of his principle. Not just industrial pollution, but personal pollution produced by driving burning wood in one's fireplace, smoking, or having a national radio show that uses electricity violates the nap. See, I don't know if I can agree with this one, because usually when people are polluting, they're like buying products from the store, throwing away the wrappers, and they end up in landfills. Or like if you're driving your car and it's releasing a lot of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere... Like, most people are aware that they're polluting on an everyday basis, and it seems like everybody is in agreement that that's okay, because everybody continues to do it. Like, if you chose to live a pollution-free life, it would be very difficult. It would be impossible because you exhale carbon dioxide, which, according to the EPA, is a pollutant. It is also plant food, because plants turn the carbon dioxide into oxygen, so well, wouldn't if you, somebody have to pl- hold on in, in kind of this true libertarian society? Wouldn't someone have to prove damage in order to be able to make a claim against a polluter? Like just by virtue of the fact that you are bellowing smoke into the air, or you know you're really gassy, doesn't necessarily mean that somebody's being damaged. They would have to show some sort of damage, wouldn't they? Right. So what if everybody's okay with the damage, though? Like, yeah. say there's a a company that starts up in Keen and they're releasing a lot of pollutants into the atmosphere, but people are buying products from this company. Like, isn't that showing their approval by giving them money? Well, certainly it wouldn't matter if, uh, it wouldn't matter if everyone was okay with it, but all it takes is that one person to be able to make a persuasive case that this particular polluting is a damaging form of polluting. So I don't know if, if pollu- pollution would all be banned right off, right off the bat. Right, but Uh, just by virtue of the fact that we're all living, we're all polluting, like, you have to eat in order to live, and, like, if I I eat a banana and throw the peel out my car window, like, technically that's pollution, because I'm littering. It's technically littering, but I don't think that dropping a banana peel could be considered pollution, because banana peels are biodegradable and will eventually turn back into dirt. So where's the line draw between littering and pollution, then? I draw the line at whether or not the thing is biodegradable. Hmm. So could you possibly live, like, only using things that were biodegradable? I just, I don't think that's even possible. It's impossible. Especially not in modern day. We have to have landfills in order to have the the modern life that, that we do. But if you take all the trash and you put it in one neat place is that really considered polluting at that point 
Uh, so the land, the existence of the landfill isn't necessarily pollution, although I'm sure there are people who would argue that it is, simply because at one point it was pristine, untouched land, and now it has become a landfill. Uh, 855-450 freeze the toll-free number. More of these reasons why the libertarians should abandon the nap, and I don't think we're even through the first one, right? Uh, we are through the first okay. one. Okay, we're going to continue then on to number two, and we'll take your calls and thoughts at 855-450 free. This is Free Talk Live. My name is Jessica Armand. I'm an activist, a GCN listener, and mother of three. Our drinking water and food are filled with fluoride and other contaminants that harm our teeth and gums. To protect my family, I created My Magic Mud, an all-natural teeth whitening and strengthening remedy. My Magic Mud is a soft powder that polishes your teeth, reduces sensitivity, and removes harmful toxins from deep inside your mouth. You deserve a bright, healthy smile. Visit MyMagicMud.com and get yours today. That's MyMagicMud.com. Hi, this is Larry Smith. Sometimes bad things happen to good people. When the cleaners ruined some special clothing, all they could do was show us a sign that said they weren't responsible. But when they got the letter from one of our Legal Shield attorneys, he promptly gave us a check for $1,152. Worry less and live more with lsprotection.com. That's lsprotection.com or call 855-340-SAVE. That's 855-340-7283. Results will vary from case to case. Hi, I'm Derek J. I don't want a politician to represent me. To me, government is the idea that one group of people can coerce everyone to comply with an edict or face increasing punishments up to and including death. Despite perhaps the most noble of intentions, the best government services are a far cry from what could be provided for by voluntary interactions. Besides, the people who call themselves the government wage wars and put peaceful people in jail for crimes involving no victims. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Email is easy, instant, and free, and that can be real embarrassing. Email lacks the eye contact and body language you get in face-to-face -face conversation, or the tone of voice and other nuance you hear in a telephone conversation. Email is just words, often few words. We're all smothering in spam, so we often reply in terse fashion that's easy to misunderstand. And email doesn't cost you a postage stamp, and it lacks the deliberation time it would take to walk to the snail mailbox so it's easy to succumb to the oh yeah stimulus response trap when in doubt don't snap back at snippy messages you get you may have mistaken the sender's intent and unless you're sending AOL to AOL there's no unsend for more tips on critical communication skills for the way things are now hit survivalspeech.com I'm Holland Cook while our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm.
This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything you want. Here toll free at 855-453-free. That's 855-450-3733. And Skype on into the show at username lrn.fm. Feel free to reach out in that way if you prefer. And go to freetalklive.com. Enjoy all the features on our site for free. Another great website, freeross.org. It's all about Ross Ulbricht. He is the man accused of being Dread Pirate Roberts. And if you haven't heard the story about Ross Ulbricht and who he is alleged to be, you really should go and learn more about him. You can go to freeross.org to get started. He is accused of running the Silk Road. The Silk Road is an underground black market kind of an open-air drug market, ultimately. And you can buy other things there that aren't necessarily illegal. So it's really more just an open marketplace. It's just that drugs tend to be the number one category as far as items sold there. The FBI took the site out late in 2013. They arrested Ross at the same time, accusing him of being the mastermind behind it. If he is the mastermind behind the site, he's a hero to the black market and to the freedom community, especially considering he describes himself, I believe, as a libertarian. Uh, both Ross and Dread Pirate Roberts self-describe as libertarians. But if he's not, Ro- if, Ross- if Ross Ulbricht is not Dread Pirate Roberts, then he's a man who's been wrongfully accused. Either way, he could use some help with his defense. If you want to help this guy out and help you know, in a very, very critical case to this insane war on drugs, please go to freeross.org. They have contribution uh, options there, including PayPal, Bitcoin, of course, as well as uh, you can just cut them a check if you want freeross.org as we continue here uh we're going to go to the phones and your thoughts we'll continue these six reasons why libertarians should abandon the non-aggression principle we've got five more of those to go through but armando is on the line first in utah armando you're on free talk live hey there hey what's on your Um, mind tonight so a few months ago one of you guys mentioned crusader kings 2 and then a few weeks ago one of you mentioned hearthstone and I got me curious, what games do you guys play? Well, that's a good question. Uh, so That most likely would have been Johnny Ray. Johnny Ray has, uh, has a feature on Tuesday nights where he, most Tuesday nights, some nights we don't do it, but uh, most of the time he has his Johnny Ray's Game of the Week. And the two games that you mentioned were a couple of the games that, uh, that he has been playing recently. But actually, it's funny you, mentioned, you bring this up because we were talking about it during one of the breaks, and Ellen says she used to be a gamer. Yeah, I used to be. Um, I used to play all sorts of games. Uh, Mario, mostly now I just play Skyrim. <laughs> oh, Skyrim. Now, uh, describe what's... I mean, I think most everyone knows what Mario is, but what is Skyrim? How would you just de- describe that to somebody who doesn't know? Well, Skyrim's... Uh, it's like a sandbox game. You, It's a first, uh, first-person role-playing game. You basically decide what race you want to be, and then you're... It's like a World of Warcraft type thing, Pretty much. You're playing in this medieval type setting. There's dragons. There's all sorts of other creatures, giant spiders, scorpion looking things. Um, You can choose to be a a bad guy or a good guy. You you can sneak and steal things out of people's pockets or you can kill dragons and be a hero. Yeah. Hold on. Can you tame the dragons? (laughs) No. And then take over the seven kingdoms? Well, I don't want to give too much away, but there is, um, if you get far enough into the storyline, you can actually befriend a dragon and fight with him. Wow, I, I think I played that that game all the way through and I didn't get to that part. <laughs> so it's one of the things... There's actually like, an, go ahead. Oh, there's actually an expansion for it where you can ride a dragon and all that. How about that? Skyrim is a, is a cool game. I played it. It's, um, it's a, like she said, a first-person game. So it's not like World of Warcraft, Daryl, in that... World of Warcraft, as I understand it, is not a first-person game. It is also not a, a multi, massively multiplayer online game, which is also what a World of Warcraft is, where that's one of the kinds of games where the game just goes on forever, and you can you just keep playing with multiple players online, and there's always new quests and things like that, and they usually charge you a monthly fee for games like that. Skyrim's just a single player game and uh, Oh, Skyrim it's one that you put in your little uh computer play or your video game playing device I like believe a, there are, Xbox 3 Yeah, or I believe there are Xbox and whatever. uh and PS4? PlayStation versions. I played one on on the computer. Um so there's you know they're available for different ones. So I'm currently playing when I get the chance uh Borderlands 2, which is a more of a, an action-oriented RPG game, but it still has those RPG elements. And for those that don't know, an, an RPG is a role-playing game 
it's, that are typically defined by gaining levels for your character as you uh, as you smash other enemies. You get points for that, and the more points that you gain, the more levels you get, and the more levels you get, the the more powerful of a character you control. But of course, over time, they throw more powerful enemies at you, so ultimately, it, it just all kind of uh, evens out. So that's what I've been playing. What about you, Armando? Oh, uh, I, you guys were talking about World of Warcraft a lot, and I recently, recently got back into that after playing it when I was a lot younger. Um, I actually don't know anything played... about World of Warcraft. I am afraid to play massively multiplayer online role-playing games. I like games like Skyrim because even though, as Ellen described, it's a sandbox, you can basically go in there and do whatever you want. There's no, um, you know, there's no direction that the game forces you into. You could play that for many, many hours, but ultimately that game has an ending point, and uh, and a game like World of Warcraft does not. So that kind of freaks me out because I it, I have a a dangerous relationship with video games where I, if I get into a game, it'll keep me up all night long, and uh, and well, I'll stay up all night long, and that's not good for me. So I can only do that for so many days, and if I were to do, you know, if I were to have some sort of game that never ended, that could be a problem. Absolutely. But I'm glad you like it. Did that answer your question, Armando? Yeah, I, I just had a raving curiosity. Thank there you. you. Go. Thanks for the call tonight. Uh, the toll-free number, 855-450-FREE. Now, Daryl, what about you? Did you? Uh, I, I just realized you didn't really answer I that question. I don't gamer, really play games, but if I'm going to play a game, it's going to be either like NCAA football or now, now you're talking about like, video games. What about Dominion? I've seen you playing Dominion. That's not a video game. What about it's a Pokemon? Card game. Have either of you played Pokemon before? I used no. to be really into that. I'm 36 years <laughs> old. I have never played Pokemon. Pokemon. But it's been around for such a long time. It has, but I don't think it really I was in my until... 20s when it came out. Yeah, I don't think it became popular until, uh, let's see, until I got out of high school. I don't remember when it started getting popular, but I know that when I was in high school, Magic the Gathering was really popular. Like, a bunch of kids at the school had Magic the Gathering cards. Yeah, yeah. And then there was this thing called Pogs, which was very popular as well. <laughs> I don't really That was know popular how to amongst the kids that were in, like, elementary school now, when I was this? in college. What is that? Is that similar to Tamagotchi? I, I don't know, and you're and Daryl, I should clarify that the school I went to for most of my uh, middle and high school years also had an elementary component, so there were like, Pogs, there were b a bunch of middle schoolers and uh, fourth okay. and fifth graders on the campus. No, so Pogs are like that. something that goes on a milk cap. They look like milk caps. Except they don't have a screwy thing. They're just flat so piece, pieces what do you, of cardboard what do you do with them? I don't, I don't really know. know. There's some sort of ball involved. Uh, you you have multiple pogs. I don't know if you're trying to pick them up or something like that or throw them down. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> Wikipedia probably knows the answer to this, uh, but to this question. But go, going totally back qualifies. to the video game, if I'm going to play a video game, that I'm going to set it to career mode. So that uh, wait, for the, the, the football or the wrestling? For like either. Okay. And then it never ends because it just keeps going mm. on and on. You know, like you can win all of the championships, but you'd still have to then defend them. I see. Or with football, there was a game that I had several years ago for, I think, Xbox, to where you could actually become a football coach, and then you would have to do recruiting, and then you would have the season, and then you would recruit players again. I don't think I could stand playing a football game like that. I'm not a sports guy. Um, I am. What really bothered me was that I worked, used to work at Kmart in the electronics section, so I'd see every year they would come out with a new football game, like Madden 97, Madden 96, Madden 98. Like, what is the difference? They're not reworking the, the players. Game. They're just changing the names no, of, the, actually, of the players? No, they, actually, they do tweak the game a little bit. But then they I also can't spending they also a year. update it with all of the new players for the new teams, yeah. you give know you more features. The only football game I ever liked playing was uh, Mutant League Football. Now that's a fun game. That's where you actually can kill the entire other team. <laughs> Tech Mobile, uh, greatest game ever. We're coming up here in moments. Eight fifty-five, four fifty-three. You can bring up what you want. Free talk live. 
I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact in helping make a difference in the world and one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends to prove just how good it is we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience all you do is cover shipping go to coffee.freetalklive.com buzzbox coffee is organic so it contains no pesticides or toxins it's shade grown so less acidity and no heartburn it's top 1% Arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com Imagine an acne treatment breakthrough that even Proactive says is better than Proactive. Announcing all new Proactive Plus, the revolutionary new way to clear your skin from the number one name in acne care. Proactive Plus is our best, most effective solution ever. And when you call 1-800-721-4255 today, you can have it tomorrow. Proactive Plus is the modern acne miracle that treats your skin beautifully. The plus means more. More precise, targeted medicine for faster, gentler acne prevention. And more skin-loving solutions so your complexion can look bright and beautiful. I am just so happy with Proactive Plus. I don't think my skin has ever looked this good. Call 1-800-721-4255. Be one of the first to try Proactive Plus. Guaranteed 100% risk-free. You won't see this limited-time offer on TV. It's a radio exclusive. 1-800-721-4255. 1-800-721-4255. Free Talk Live. I'm sure I can speak for many of thousands. I don't fear illegals. I don't want them here and their filth that they bring with and the disease that they bring with. All the people who work in the stores and the markets and the restaurants are overwhelmingly Hispanic. And they seem very clean and be doing a fine job here. And I've never heard anything about problems with disease. For you to defend the illegal immigrants, and I'm not sure, as I said earlier, which host at what time is very condescending. Um, Madam, I will defend anybody that is peaceful and looking for a better life for themselves. We well, already pointed I out. I, I don't defend them. I, I wish that people like you. You would say have that to Mexicans are filthy themselves. and you call me condescending, lady? You say no, they're disease-ridden and filthy and they, I'm condescending? And they are. And they are. And You're I outrageous. Get her out of here. Thank you for the she's, call. She's had all her rope. She's hung herself. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, Buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Are you looking for camping, hunting, survival, or shooting gear? ManVentureOutpost.com carries the name brands you want at the lowest prices. Ammunition, knives, firearm accessories, archery, air guns, scopes, binoculars, laser sights, tactical flashlights, fish finders, and boating equipment. ManVentureOutpost.com is family owned and has the lowest prices. Go check it for yourself. Get it quick. Get it from ManVentureOutpost.com. Now buy firearms at ManVentureOutpost.com. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, take control, toll free at 855-453. That is the Pro XPN toll free line. That's 855-450-3733. And speaking of ProXPN, if you care about your online privacy, you really need to go and check them out at ProXPN.com slash FTL. They will encrypt your online data. They're a virtual private network that is global. And so they encrypt your data before it reaches your Internet service provider, which right now your ISP is probably logging every single thing you do online. Uh, so every website you visit, all the search terms you enter, are likely going into a log file that may be five years old as far as your, uh, how long they've been watching you. 
So you can go and stop your ISP from snooping on you, stop the coffee shop admin from lurking and seeing what you're doing online, stop whoever it is that's sniffing out your Wi-Fi packets to try to steal your bank account information. All of these things can be prevented by using ProXPN. So it's a very handy tool, and the price is right. You can start for free at ProXPN.com slash FTL. When you're ready, though, to upgrade, use code FTL20 and get 20% off the price of their premium account, which gives you unlimited bandwidth. It gives you sites around the world, servers that you can connect to around the world, uh, and that means that your location is actually pr uh, protected with ProXPN because the sites you visit will think you're coming from the location of the ProXPN server, not your actual location. Uh, plus, you can get past blocks on the internet. Maybe you've got a uh, you've got a block at a workplace, or a block at a school, or for instance, you're visiting another country where certain sites are prohibited or search terms. ProXPN gets you around that. ProXPN.com/ftl. Go get started right now. It's free to get started, and then there's also uh, downloadables for Windows, Mac, iOS, or Android devices. There's a different different setup for Linux. Uh, just email ProXPN to get that setup information for Linux. Anyway, it's all with a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. So there's nothing to lose except your privacy. Go and learn more and get started at ProXPN.com/ftl. Coupon code FTL20. And if you use Bitcoin to pay for your annual plan, you'll save even more. 855 450 free is the toll free number. We've got Garrett on the line in Maryland via Skype. Garrett, you're on the air. Hey, what's up, guys? Hey, what's on your mind tonight? Well, I just was enjoying the conversation you guys were having about games. Um, it's, it's interesting. You bring up a few things that I'm really interested in video games, board games, and pogs. <laughs> Pogs. Um, All right. Well, okay. So it, we didn't know what pogs were. How, yeah. Can you explain what what those are? I really would love to clarify this for you guys All because right. I used to play this in like fourth and fifth grade, like elementary school. It didn't even quite make it into middle school for me. But this was we would um we would gather before school in like you know the little clusters or whatever, not like your lockers or whatever, but outside your classrooms, and we would sit there and we would. We would bust out a few pogs each. You know, they're like you guys were saying, they kind of look like milk caps or whatever, or like more importantly, like the seal inside of the milk cap, maybe. Okay. Uh, they're just thin little round circles of cardboard, and you stack them on top of each other, and then you have what's called a slammer, which is the same diameter circle as the pogs, and each person takes a turn slamming their slammer down, and however many pogs they manage to flip over, uh, they win essentially uh, depending on is there you know, any there's... strategy to this or is it just pure luck uh one might say it's on the wrist sort of thing um you can dev there was definitely better players than others uh they were the ones that had the really long tubes of pogs that would show up <laughs> wait a minute okay so <laughs> so you bring a tube i remember the seeing the tubes in the the kids that i went to school with so you'd bring a tube full of pogs, you'd have your own slammer, or would each person use the same slammer? You would have multiple different slammers to yourself. And, and when you <laughs> flip the pogs, uh, well, first of all, do different players put down different pogs on the, the playing field? It, I mean, when you say playing field, it's literally just like what it is. Like you've played quarters before, right? You just you, you slam a quarter down, it bounces into the shot glass or the cup or whatever. I've never played quarters. I, I have not either. No, me neither. The closest I've ever come to playing anything like that is jacks. Okay. Yep. I've okay, jacks. jacks. Yeah, there you go. So you bounce the ball and you got to grab a couple of jacks up in your hand and you count how many jacks you pick up, right? Right, so you're picking up pogs? pogs? You're not picking up the pogs. You just got to flip them over. Are you bouncing like, a ball? But wait, but who, no, but, you're bouncing a slammer. But but who brings the pogs into the, the like the game? So like each person brings their pogs to play. Is there a certain number that you start by putting down on the on the floor or on the ground? Yeah, and that's agreed between players. So each player like so you're gonna put down five. Each player puts down five. Is it that kind there of thing? There you go. There you and go. And you have and to you mix them together. Them Do you mix the pogs together? Sure. And yeah. then what happens you, when the pogs flip over? Do you collect them from the map and you keep them, or do you give yeah, them back? Whichever to... ones flip over completely, like you, you put them all face down. Whichever right. ones land face up, whoever threw that slammer gets to keep them. So some people were like bosses with this, and they would, you know, you could have a stack of 10 pogs right there. 
they'd throw down the slammer and the whole thing flips over and you're just like bah! bam well that that's was it fun. game over so yeah. so they Let's would get again. to keep the other players pogs and that's sort of what the competition is for is to see who can walk away with the most of their other players pogs is that right it, exactly so it's like the late 90s early aughts version of marbles that my dad played Absolutely. and got yelled at for playing because he'd always lose Except this, uh, what now would marbles? Would you you would keep the other person's marbles? Yes. Okay, I don't know. I wouldn't know. So and don't lose your marbles. Too. And tops too. Tops was like the sumo wrestling of this stuff. You'd you you'd go like you'd set up a little circle with chalk or whatever. Each person like has their little top and they would throw it out in the center of the circle now, would, and they would, battle. Would some kids? I remember those. Would some kids in the pogs game? Would they bring? less than desirable pogs to the the field you know, oh yeah like cheap you pogs had... or something like that because there's different like you could spend money on these things obviously so like what what would happen there well you would bring other tubes <laughs> and other little cases and stuff the stuff you were willing to battle with and the ones that you just wanted to show off there were certain pogs that were collector items with you know officially from pog with the the stupid staple in it and all that stuff i still have some pogs i need to go bust these out um, <laughs> but okay. eventually some of the tubes would always wind up turning into like smoking devices of some sort. <laughs> You'd move well, on to bigger and better I games. I would hope not in fourth grade, but eventually people start that's what early. would happen. Yeah. <laughs> hey, thanks for explaining that. What else did you want to throw out there, Garrett? Any other favorites? Well, no, I mean, I'm, I'm glad we got to clarify the whole Pog game. Yeah, well, so what did you move into these days? Well, now Crack. I am playing Heroin. Warlock 2, The Exiled. You're the playing team. what? I'm sorry. Warlock 2, The Exiled, if you guys are into that. Is Sky that a role-playing game? Yeah, it's definitely a role-playing game. It's like a turn-based uh, battle strategy sort of thing. Ooh, I do uh, like the turn-based games. I uh, I played XCOM not too long ago, sometime last year. Yeah, which, that's a fun one. Which is a that's fun a one. one. So, hey, thanks, Garrett. I appreciate hearing from you. 855 450 free is the Pro XPN toll free line. So during the break, Daryl and I were talking about um, video games, and he brought up a story about somebody who was sent to jail for murdering their online character. I actually did find an article about this. I don't believe this. This is an onion. Do you no, want to hear it? No, it this is, is not a real story. the onion. Okay. This, I found this article on what? findingdulcinea.com, and the. the article's title is virtual maple story murder reveals online lives gone too far and this is back in 2008 so the arrest of a japanese woman who killed the online version of her virtual husband shows how the line between reality and fantasy be can be become blurred a 43 year old japanese piano teacher could face five years of jail time or a fine of up to five thousand dollars for essentially the murder of her online husband from the game maple story the woman was enraged after the man, who was married to her in the game but not in real life, abruptly broke <laughs> off the online relationship. So she signed on to his profile with his identification and password and terminated his avatar in May, the Associated Press reports. Hmm. An avatar is an online representation of a real-life person. I was suddenly divorced without a word of warning. That made me so angry, a police official quoted the woman as saying. So they arrested her on October 23rd, and she's being charged with illegal access onto a computer and manipulating electronic data. Okay, so she's not being charged with the murder of the character. She's being charged with uh, basically fraud. I mean, logging I, I knew there was account. something about she murdered somebody's online character and then went to jail. Okay, the that thing happened a, six years right, ago. Yeah. Forgive me for not remembering the exact details. Still, though, should somebody go to prison for five years for accessing somebody's video game account online? I don't think that's really appropriate. I don't know. She must have been very angry if she was capable of committing fraud and murdering this guy, though. Like, I think this is a, a virtual representation of what she actually wanted to do, yeah. maybe. Like... Why would you be so angry over a video game, though? Like There's a guy, uh, a journalist named Barrett Brown, who is facing 100 years in jail yeah. because he copied links to a website from one chat room and posted them into another, and he's being charged with all kinds of computer fraud and wiretapping. So they weren't even real-life boyfriend-girlfriend? No, it's just on the game. <laughs> Well, on the other hand, he probably shouldn't have given her, her his uh, login credentials. 855-450-FREE. I mean, if she wasn't her real 
if you, she wasn't his real girlfriend, how the hell did she get that info? It's Free Talk Live. Breathe it in, kid. Clean, fresh air thanks to these new air handler filters. They're more energy efficient, hold more dust, and are stronger than ever. And Granger's got over 3,000 different styles and sizes to choose from. Just ordered a new batch from Granger.com today. I love oxygen, kid. And this facility's got some great AO2. I'm breathing easier just thinking about these air handler filters. Get some today. Get it? Got it? Good. Call, click Granger.com slash air handler or stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. There's a treasure hunt going on at mathgate.info, a Bitcoin treasure hunt. You can find Bitcoins by proving theorems. So learn some logic, do some math, find some Bitcoins. Even better, mathgate.info is designed to be used anonymously. So connect to mathgate.info through Tor, prove some theorems, find some anonymous Bitcoins. Don't wait. Others are already searching for the Bitcoins. Go to mathgate.info today and join the treasure hunt. There are anonymous Bitcoins to be had for the taking at mathgate.info. MineThings.com is a fun online game that pits you against people around the world to mine for scarce resources. Do business in a capitalist economy with virtually mined gold, tax-free. It doesn't require a big-time commitment. Your little mining robot guy works whether you're logged in or not. It costs nothing to play, but you can buy bonuses. They even accept bitcoins. Go to MineThings.com, use coupon code FTL, and double your mining speed. It's free. MineThings.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From King in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Friday, April 18th, 2014. Silver is trading at $19.65 per ounce. Gold is worth $1,295 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $475. USA Today reports the New Hampshire State Senate voted Thursday to repeal its anti-adultery law, sending the bill to Governor Maggie Hassan, who says she's likely to sign it into law. Under the law, the legislature voted to repeal adultery as a Class B misdemeanor and punishable by a fine of up to $1,200. During a public hearing last month, State Rep Tim O'Flaherty, the bill's sponsor, said, I don't think there's any appetite in New Hampshire to use police powers to enforce a marriage. Naomi Khan, a law professor at the George Washington University Law School, says states' anti-adultery laws are rarely enforced, a vestige of our country's puritanical beginnings, saying, I suspect it's not something most people having non-marital relationships are thinking about. States with anti-adultery laws generally define adultery as a married person having sexual intercourse with someone other than their spouse. In North Carolina, adultery is when two people lewd and lasciviously associate. In South Carolina, adultery includes having habitual carnal intercourse with a person who is married to someone else. In practical terms, committing adultery poses very little threat of prosecution, but it could have civil consequences, such as impacting custody battles during a divorce. The New Hampshire Senate also failed to pass a bill to repeal the death penalty in the Granite State. That bill received 12 votes in support and 12 against in the 24-member Senate. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800 874 9760. Antiwar.com reports, it seemed hard to imagine. When Russian airline Aeroflot began reporting that Ukraine had sent them an official order banning all the Russian men between the age of 16 and 60 entering the Ukraine. The ban also applies to all Crimeans, including women. With so many false narratives out there, it seemed like just another, but 
Ukraine's border service confirmed that the policy was in place and part of a policy of limiting access to undesirable individuals. The official defense of the policy went on to claim that the measures were a response to the risk of possible terrorist attack by ethnic Russians in eastern Ukraine, where protesters hold considerable territory. Russia blasted the policy as disgusting, going on to term it a discriminatory and unfriendly act. Aeroflot said they will offer travelers a full refund on any tickets to Ukraine. FPP Radio News is brought to you by $6 Shirts. $6 Shirts is one of the top t-shirt companies on the web, and they want to be the t-shirt company for the Bitcoin marketplace. They actually give priority to all Bitcoin orders. Shop $6 Shirts using my affiliate link, 6.fppradio.com, and help support FPP Radio News. That's 6.fppradio.com. The New York Times reports Walmart, the country's largest retailer, announced on Thursday that it would allow customers to make store-to-store money transfers within the United States at cut-rate fees. This latest offer, aimed largely at low-income shoppers who often rely on places like check-cashing stores for simple transactions, represents another effort by the giant retailer to carve out a space and territory that once belonged exclusively to traditional banks. In this instance, Competitors, like longtime wire transfer companies, were the immediate target. MoneyGram stock fell more than 17% on the news. Western unions went down about 5%. Walmart has become a big player in alternative financial products, especially those that cater to people with little or no access to banks. Services like prepaid debit cards, check cashing, and now the new cash transfer program called Walmart to Walmart. Lower income consumers have been a core demographic for Walmart, but in recent quarters, those shoppers have turned increasingly to dollar stores. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. As Sao Paulo struggled to dig out after last week's devastating earthquake, I'm just praying. I'm just praying and helping. One group was left with no one to care for them. There is nowhere for these homeless dogs to go. There is no food to give them. There is no clean water. These dogs are going to starve to death. I have to do a big humane thing. I have to put these dogs down. O'Brady Shaw is the only journalist compassionate enough to do what has to be done. Put down 50 or 60 dogs today. I didn't want to. Let me help you! The fruit would have been much worse if I hadn't done it. It's better this way. Old Brady Shaw goes where other reporters won't and does the jobs other reporters can't. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Gut Check with O'Brady Shaw. Live from Sao Paulo. Tomorrow night, only on the Onion News Network. Talk Live, launching into the second hour of the program. We started talking about uh, the non-aggression pr- principle and why six reasons why the libertarians should reject the non-aggression principle. We got through one reason and then talked about video games for the rest of uh, the hour, just by total chance, because you can call in and bring up anything that you want here. With you in the studio tonight, it's Ian here. Ellen. And Daryl. Ellen's here courtesy of her radio show, which is ALP. And you guys are kind of going through some changes behind the scenes at ALP. Allie is moving out of Keene or has already moved out, but it's my understanding you guys are going to keep it, keep going. Yeah, we are. Um, I think the next episode we're going to stay in this studio. Mm-hmm. So tomorrow night we'll be recording here. But in the future, I believe Allie and I are going to be recording at the new studio that she has in her house in... Um, Oh, I don't remember what the town is called. Alton Bay. I Alton think. Bay, yes. It's like an hour and a half or something. Uh, yeah, it's minutes. quite a drive from here. But so, are you not going to be live anymore? No, I don't think so. We really? will. We will live stream it, but uh, mostly it's just going to be, you know, if you want to hear it, it's going to be at a different time. We ah. haven't decided on the day or the time yet. I believe we're doing it on Tuesday night now interesting okay well yeah definitely let me know when the decision is made 
Uh, okay, cool. Well, ALPshow.com, you can go there and get more Ellen and uh, Allie, who is her co-host, and they usually focus on one topic for two hours and really delve into it and get into detail. Unlike Free Talk Live, we don't tend to do that very often around here. So thanks for coming on tonight. Yeah, well, thank you for having me on. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Let's jump back into the list, Daryl. Of course, the phone lines are open for anybody that wants to join in either on this topic or to bring up something completely different. But uh, we were on item number two of uh, six. We were going to item number two okay. for the listeners who may not have heard item number one on the list. The first one on this list, and the list is from libertarianism.org. Item number one is that the NAP, or non-aggression principle, prohibits all pollution. Item number two is that the non-aggression principle prohibits small harms for large benefits. Prohibits small harms. For large benefits. Okay. The NAP prohibits all pollution because its prohibition on aggression is absolute. No amount of aggression, no matter how small, is morally permissible, and no amount of offsetting benefit can change this fact. But suppose, to borrow a thought from Hume, that I could prevent the destruction of the whole world by lightly <laughs> scratching your finger. Or, to take perhaps a more plausible example, suppose that Im by imposing a very small tax on only on billionaires, I could provide life-saving vaccinations for tens of thousands of desperately poor children. Even if we grant that taxation is aggression and that aggression is wrong, is it really so obvious that the relatively minor aggression involved in these examples is wrong, given the tremendous benefit it produces? I'm really surprised that an article like this is appearing on a website called libertarianism.com. I mean... Dot org. I'm sorry, dot org, whatever. Anyway, a <laughs> website like libertarianism. I mean, this to me sounds like, wouldn't that be utilitarianism? The idea that... Uh, that Oh well, the greatest good for the greatest number. Yeah, and of course, yeah. you know, by by whose determination is what is the greatest good. Um, but you're essentially this guy's saying that oh well, if we tax some billionaires, the, a little tax, then we can save all these people's lives. Doesn't that make by it giving them vaccinations worthwhile? that they may not even want? Well, that's another issue entirely. But look, if it's such a good idea. Why can't you raise this small amount of money voluntarily? I mean, right. there's plenty of billionaires who are looking for places to put their money, and yes. many of them want to support charity. So, again, this to me sounds like a real slippery slope, and I would, I would hope a libertarian would be against this idea. Now, look, I'm not a fan of the NAP necessarily. I don't think personally the NAP goes far enough because the NAP doesn't speak to peace. It, it just simply says that you don't support aggression, but usually – there's a lot of people who will use the NAP, or the non-aggression principle, as it is called, to justify an amount of retaliatory force that is completely unjustified right. and absolutely outrageous. So there's certainly more to say about the non-aggression principle, but I think in this case, this is a shock that a libertarian would, would write such a thing. I mean, that's really you're opening a Pandora's box. It's a slippery slope. As soon as it's okay to tax some people for one thing that's supposedly good, then you've just, you know, then there's another hundred things coming down the pipe. And I, I wish that I could say that I'm surprised that someone calling themselves a libertarian would have such an opinion, mm -hmm. but with the expanse of the word libertarian right. to mean everybody that's not Adolf Hitler, then <laughs> you know you really have a hard time limiting what actually is and isn't libertarian. Well, speaking because, of speaking of Hitler, ahead. I wanted to like just pose this to you. Um, Hitler technically never murdered anybody himself. But he led a movement that led to millions of people being killed. Yes. So, according to this guy, it would be okay to shoot Hitler and save these millions of Jews that were killed because of his ideas. So, would you agree with something like that? Well, if you have a time machine, then that's plausible. But as it is, let, let's just say that... We could prevent pretty much every 
current human injustice by preventing William the Conqueror from leaving Normandy. So what are you trying to say here? I'm saying if all you want to do is prevent bad things that happened since the 1930s, then yes, kill baby Hitler. If you want to prevent all of the horrible things that have happened because of the Anglo-Saxon American Empire, then you need to go back and prevent William the Conqueror from leaving Normandy, uniting England into one well, kingdom. And are you really talking about this? I mean, I'm not saying go back in time and do this. I'm just saying if it were to happen again current day. Like, honestly, I would hope that if there was another person that came up, like Hitler, where he became very popular for his ideas and he was espousing things that were violent, that people would just ignore him or discredit him. Like, that's really what I would hope for, but for usually sure. that's not what happens. Well, if the, for instance, if, as I understand it, and I'm not an expert on World War II, but if the Jews didn't voluntarily turn into the ghettos and sign up and accept the gold star, as many of them did, it would have been a whole lot more difficult for them to be found out and slaughtered and kidnapped and, and all of that. So to some extent, people's obedience is what did them in right. in that circumstance. Um, that's not to excuse what you know the Nazis did, but it is to say that if people are to non-cooperate with people who would want to rule them and control them, right. and that makes the, uh, the job of ruling and controlling a whole that, lot more expensive and difficult. There so, were people in Germany that were Jewish that did not cooperate and those people were hunted down and executed as well. Mm -hmm. There's a very famous book that documents this. It's called The Diary of Anne Frank. Yep. So, so you know, non-cooperation did not keep people alive throughout the entirety of oh, it's Hitler's gonna, reign. It's not going to guarantee that you live, but it's going to make ruling people a lot more difficult. It's it's a lot harder to, uh, to rule and capture people who don't line up for your capturing agents. Yes. And I think if a lot of people had, if, if more people had chosen non-cooperation, if they had gotten a larger support group or a larger uh, resistance, then be the violence against the person who is trying to perpetrate the violence wouldn't be necessary. Well, and I, I think something else that is sort of missing is that the way the Nazi, you know, sort of, uh, I, I, I am not really sure what term to use here, but they were going after such a small group and they had demonized them so badly that people got behind it. And then they went after other groups. It wasn't just the Jews, but it was also the gypsies that were being persecuted very badly. And people supported it because, well, it's just a small group, and they are ruining our lives. The toll-free number tonight is 855-450-FREE. Of course, going back in time, even if it were possible, as Daryl was suggesting earlier, probably wouldn't really solve anything because even if you were to prevent Hitler from coming to power, there'd be some other madman. It's Free Talk Live. I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact in helping make a difference in the world and one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends to prove just how good it is we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience all you do is cover shipping go to coffee.freetalklive.com buzzbox coffee is organic so it contains no pesticides or toxins it's shade grown so less acidity and no heartburn it's top one percent arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com Gold isn't for you? Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources, one of the world's premier gold and precious metal investing firms. I get it. You wouldn't buy gold if you believed that the government is doing a great job, that the Fed will stop handing out trillions of dollars like bailout candy, that Social Security would be there for you. That's not what's happening. You might even pass on gold if the stimulus package wouldn't fuel inflation, or that the dollar wouldn't lose value, or that your retirement would be secure. If all looks rosy to you, then now is not the time to buy gold. 
For the realists, there have never been more sobering reasons to diversify with gold. Since 2001, the U.S. dollar index has tanked 30%, while gold has risen 300%. Right now, savvy investors are adding gold to their portfolios. You should, too. Find out what they know. Call us, and I'll send you 10 reasons why gold will do very well, free. 800-686-2237. 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. The Shire Free Church offers a sanctuary to those seeking an escape from state churches. The Shire Free Church is an interfaith, diverse group of people that may not share identical theological beliefs. As a member in or minister of the Shire Free Church, you are a sovereign individual and may be the faith of your choice. We don't claim to have all of the answers. We are open to all peaceful people. We want to learn from each other. What unifies the Shire Free Church and its diverse members is peace, love, and liberty. There are many paths to God, one for every individual. The Shire Free Church does not define a specific path beyond those parameters that must be your foundation. Peace as your way, love as your guide, and liberty as your light. Learn more at church.shiresociety.com. That's church.shiresociety.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges start a conversation with your neighbor or your doctor or your family or your school. Now there's teachers and lawyers and business executives and they all wear shiny badges and they all reject the state. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges show the world that you reject coercion and aggression and oppression by the state. Shinybadges.com This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. Free Talk Live. Take control toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And, of course, you can join us online at freetalklive.com and enjoy all the features on the site. They are free, freetalklive.com. Those other talk show hosts want to charge you for their websites. We don't do that stuff. You can just go and enjoy it at freetalklive.com. And speaking of free things, you can get a, a whole pound of top-of-the-line coffee for free. All you have to do is just cover the cost of shipping. The pound itself will cost you nothing. And this is high-quality product. This is shade-grown 100% organic and top 1% grade Arabica. It's very, very good coffee. But there's a lot of good coffee out there in the world. What makes BuzzBox Coffee special? Well, they're helping people around the world. They're set up a program that allows people to buy into their coffee co op. And basically, for every 10 Free Talk Live listeners that order their coffee from coffee.freetalklive.com, we can finance a micro loan through World Vision. So our target is 1,000 Free Talk Live coffee drinkers. To order from coffee.freetalklive.com, which will fund a hundred microloans to help change people's lives in really tough parts of the world to live in, getting people in poverty an opportunity to make a better life for themselves. This is all done by you buying your coffee from coffee.freetalklive.com. It's that simple. You get great coffee. Other people get a good chance at making a better life. Coffee.freetalklive.com. Get your first pound for free. Just pay the cost of shipping, and you can cancel your subscription at any time. You buy, you get that first pound. It starts up an auto ship program because BuzzBox Coffee is so certain you're going to love their coffee that you're, you're going to want to keep receiving it. And you can select how often, what the frequency is of them sending you another pound. So you know, if it takes you four weeks to get through a pound, then set it to four weeks. If you think you need it in two weeks, six weeks, whatever. Coffee. Dot freetalklive.com. We go to the phones and your calls and thoughts. We're talking about six reasons why libertarians should reject the non-aggression principle. And we've made it through two. We have. And Chris in New York has some comments. Chris, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian, Ellen, and Daryl. Hey, guys. Good to be with you. Thanks for having me on. Hey, Chris. I, uh, I, 
Yeah, I was listening to you guys go through that list, and specifically the, the source of it troubled me, libertarianism.org, because – and they're not the only ones, but it's – it's they are entryists. They are people who are trying to hijack libertarianism into something else and quite frequently a, a, a left-wing agenda. We see the same thing on Bleeding Heart Libertarians. We see the same thing with – Kathy Reasonwitz and Antonio Bueller and well, a number of other Well, the funny thing people. is, Chris, that uh, I actually looked up during one of the breaks what the owner of this libertarianism.org is, and it's registered to the Cato Institute. Now, if anything, they're not left-leaning. They're not left at all. Right? I mean, these guys are maybe more right-leaning, but either way, uh, they're certainly poisoning, I think, the idea of libertarianism here with this article so far. I mean, to suggest that oh, well, if the greater good says that we should tax some billionaires just a little bit, then isn't that okay? I mean, that's really slippery slope material. And Wayne Root, when he was still in the Libertarian Party, while you know running for chair and trying to get the Libertarian Party presidential nomination, said that we need to redefine libertarianism to mean conservative. Oh, boy. And, of course, he ended up quitting the Libertarian Party and joining— He got ran back. out of the Libertarian Party. He went back to the Republican Party. Yes. So, so I think that I, while I think you're right, Chris, there are different groups that are attempting to sort of you know, poison the term libertarian. In this case, seems to be more righties than uh, than lefties. And that's why I think it's so dangerous to rely too much on labels and isms because— you can basically redefine libertarianism to mean whatever it is that your agenda is pushing towards. And that's disturbing. Well, but that's going on that's why I think – but you know, that's why myself and you know, Lou Rockwell and a number of others have really tried to bring it back to the non-aggression principle. And before the break, Ian, you were saying that the non-aggression principle isn't good enough. But as you know, within the non-aggression principle, there's a lot of room for a lot of things to happen, right, that we can say – you know, libertarianism is the, is the non-aggression principle, and within that, there's you know freedom to associate and, and a number of different things, of ways that we can, you know, solve problems. And when we come to people who are flat out telling us reject the NAP, you know, I think that that's when we start getting into problems, which is why you know some of us are really trying to bring it back to the NAP. Well, I agree with you that the non-aggression principle is a good starting point. It's a good kind of basic introduction to the ideas of freedom. You know, I I don't disagree with the non-aggression principle. I just, as I said, I don't think it goes far enough. So you're right. The, the non-aggression principle certainly does include a peacenik uh, like myself. And it would also include somebody like you, Chris, uh, Chris Cantwell, ChristopherCantwell.com, who uh, maybe Thank is you. a little bit more uh, supportive of defensive violence. Exactly. And, and you know what? And then, uh, you know, you and I, you know, obviously have some pretty serious differences of opinions, but uh, we get along pretty good because we know that, you know, e each of us is uh, safe, uh, you know, around the other because we're never going to initiate force against one another. And, you know, it, and nobody who doesn't initiate force and nobody who does not initiate force against me has anything to fear. And I think that you can really build communities around that and societies around that which is why I, I, I really think it's dangerous some of these people who are trying to add to or subtract from the term libertarianism, mm -hmm. which you know, for a period of time has really been sort of understood as the non-aggression principle. Some people might view it as a sliding scale that something is more or less libertarian than something else. But when people are starting to add to it, that's when I think we really get into dangerous territory. I share the concerns. Anything else you want to share tonight, Chris? You know, I, I do real quick. Actually, uh, it looked like somebody put it to your subreddit. I had brought back up the, uh, the you know, the, the issue of me being uh, kicked out of the Free State Project and Pork Fest, and I had issued a, you know, open letter to these folks. And I'm, I'm sort of upset because I've been having, you know, some trouble trying to reconcile my differences with the, with the board of the Free State Project. They're very hesitant to com communicate with me. Well, I can't speak for them, obviously. I mean, I know that uh, Carla Garrick is a pretty busy lady, um, and I can understand why there's some, you know, tough, some hard feelings between both sides. And it seems like, you know, that's good that you're reaching out to them. I, of course, you know, as you noted in your article, I have encouraged you to attend the Porcupine Freedom Festival. I, to me, to me, all that happened, Chris, when you were banned from the Free State Project last year, was they said that you were unwelcomed from the event but that to me is not a ban from the event there have been people who've been banned from the porcupine freedom festival in the past including a former organizer of it um, but those people were very openly banned and it was very very clear that they were banned there was there wasn't there were weren't these uh, terms like unwelcome uh, that were used so you know maybe they wouldn't sell you a ticket to pork fest but the campground itself is open to uh, to the public so there would be nothing stopping you from from coming there. So, you know, you've got my personal invitation. 
Well, I, I thank you for that. And, um, you know, but I, I, I will not I will not, unfortunately, be attending until we can get these things resolved. Anyway, I just wanted to throw it out there. Thank you guys for having me. Best on. of luck, Chris. Thanks for the call tonight. Toll free number is 855 Four fifty free. Yeah, I I don't agree uh, with where Chris comes from as far as his philosophical viewpoint of uh, using violence to end the state. But I I think that he's a, a a person who has the best of intentions, and I think that I used to share a lot of his same concerns when I was moving here to New Hampshire. I was very angry at the state, and I still had that kind of arm up and prep up mentality and. And then that, that kind of withered away as I became surrounded by other people who actually care about freedom and, and are really peace-oriented people. And they kind of showed me that peace is really the, the solution. Right. And like you were saying, the non-aggression principle, it is a really good starting point. Like, it doesn't define an entire philosophy, I wouldn't say. But it is good to start from just not being aggressive. And I think anything that – any opinion that you have that differs from another person besides that – is not really that much of an issue as long as you are both in agreement that you're not going to initiate the force. We'll come back with more. You can share your thoughts toll free at 855 450 free. We still have four more on the list of six reasons, supposedly, to throw away the non aggression principle. Correct. And we'll continue on that list here in moments. You can also take control of the airwaves. It's Free Talk Live. My name is Jessica Armand. I'm an activist, a GCN listener, and mother of three. Our drinking water and food are filled with fluoride and other contaminants that harm our teeth and gums. To protect my family, I created My Magic Mud, an all-natural teeth whitening and strengthening remedy. My Magic Mud is a soft powder that polishes your teeth, reduces sensitivity, and removes harmful toxins from deep inside your mouth. You deserve a bright, healthy smile. Visit MyMagicMud.com and get yours today. That's MyMagicMud.com. If you own a business, you need customers, right? Well, your potential customers are listening to this radio program right now, and I can help you reach them. Hi, I'm Matt Brower, a national marketing executive at the radio network responsible for this program. I can help you customize a national radio campaign that fits your budget, large or small, while targeting your specific audience. Contact me to learn how radio advertising can make your business more profitable. M-B-R-O-W-E-R at GCNlive.com. That's M-Brower at GCNlive.com. The following is an important free offer for smokers only. The makers of Victor, the world's most advanced e-cigarette, have just authorized the release of free starter kits to all smokers who call in the next 10 minutes. Valued at $99, these Victor starter kits are available for free, but only while supplies last. To guarantee your free kit, call in the next 10 minutes, 1-800-564-6941. The revolutionary Victor design creates only water vapor. There is no foul-smelling smoke and no unhealthy tar. This allows individuals to enjoy the nicotine they love without restriction, no matter where they are. The financial advantages over cigarettes are considerable as well. It is estimated that the average smoker can save hundreds of dollars a month with Victor. Again, free Victor starter kits are now available to any smoker who calls in the next 10 minutes. This is a radio-only offer not available in stores, so call now for your free kit. 1-800-564-6941. 1-800-564-6941. 1-800-564-6941. Did you know coffee is the second most absorbent crop on earth? Most coffee at grocery stores or in chains contains banned pesticides and has a high mold content. Seriously, we're proud to partner with Comano Island Coffee Roasters to provide the best of the best coffee, BuzzBox Coffee. Try a free pound today. You cover shipping. 10% of future purchases benefit our efforts to give the gift of human freedom throughout the world. At least 100 World Vision microfinance loans. For more information, go to coffee.freetalklive.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. 
FPP brings you daily news and commentary at FPP.cc, as well as weekly news in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at FPPradio.com. The monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc, and books at shop.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc, as in Creative Commons. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, take control of the airwaves should libertarians reject the non-aggression principle. I mean, this is like sacrosanct, the non-aggression principle. This is the basis of uh, much of libertarianism. But yet, libertarianism.org, one of their authors there, is arguing to get rid of it. And he's got six reasons why he says we should consider doing that. We're going down the list slowly. We're going to get uh, continue that here in a few moments and want to take your calls and thoughts at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Also want to invite you to cash into coins.com. You've been hearing a lot about bitcoins in the news. You've certainly been hearing a lot about it. If you've been listening to Free Talk Live, you may know by now that bitcoins are a decentralized, electronic, internet-based currency. Decentralized meaning they can't be stopped. There's not a central location that the feds can go and raid and shut down. The Bitcoin is an amazing technology. If you want to learn more about it, you can go to weusecoins.com. There's a great two-minute video there that will really sum it up in in an easy-to-understand manner. But when you're ready to get your first Bitcoins, or if you've already got some and you want to get some more, go to cashintocoins.com. As long as you've got a Bitcoin wallet, say, from blockchain.info or wherever, you can go to cashintocoins.com. The instructions there are easy. It's safe fast, legal, inexpensive, and customer service is their top priority. You can use a money order, a check, or wire transfer to change your cash into Bitcoins. Cashintocoins.com, they've got great rates. In fact, if you order less than $40 worth of Bitcoins from Cashintocoins.com, there's no fee. So you can literally transfer money from cash into Bitcoins and not have to pay a money transfer fee as you do with well, pretty much every other Bitcoin transaction out there. Now, if you go over 40 bucks, there's a small fee involved, but it's, uh, I think, probably the best fee I've seen in the business for transacting Bitcoin, turning cash into Bitcoins. Go, to do, uh, go check it out, learn more, and get started at cashintocoins.com as we go to the phones and your thoughts. We've got Stephen in Ohio on the Skype. Hey, Stephen. Hey, how are you guys doing? What's on your mind tonight? Oh, I just wanted to comment on... The uh, the time machine Hitler fixing <laughs> yeah, arguments sure. against the non-aggression principle. I mean, but obviously, personally, I wouldn't advocate using time machines. You know, the whole space time continuum thing that's often fantasized about and the the trickle down problems. But besides that, if it were to be done, I could see a legitimate case for doing it, but not when Hitler was a baby, right? You would do it once he's given the commands to go hurt people things like that, then you could advocate doing something like that. And it wouldn't violate the NAP, and you could still fix problems of people like Hitler. I don't know. I saw an episode of Futurama to where there was somebody (laughs) that was sent from the future to defeat Richard Nixon's head in the 2012 (laughs) president or the 3012 election for president of Earth. And (laughs) this guy won. And he just disappeared and vanished because he tore this hole in the space-time continuum Mm. because (laughs) the thing that he was sent to the past to do never happened, so therefore they never built the time machine to Mm, send him to the past. Yeah. So I mean, obviously, obviously, this is this is whimsical, right? This is what if statements. But for the person who says, "Well, what if this was true?" I mean, you can easily refute it. You just wait till Hitler does something. Without would warrant, you know, self-defense. You wouldn't have to execute babies. I mean, because then you're ent- entering into the area of thought crime, convicting Absolutely. people before they do things because so, you think they're going to do them. What What, what about my uh, statement that we should actually just go back to the year 1066 and prevent William the Conqueror from ever leaving Normandy? Well, if he was, I mean, you. you I don't think you would. 
I wouldn't advocate stopping him doing something that didn't involve violence or the threat of violence. Well, all of I mean, this is pointless, the, isn't sticking, it? I mean, right, there's no yeah, time I, I machine kinda, that we can thought, actually use. But even if there were a exactly. time machine, it ignores the nature of humanity, and that is that it's a very, in a lot of ways, destructive uh, nature, and hopefully we can arise past that at some point in the future, evolve past that. But if you kill some, you know, kill off Hitler or William of Normandy, was it? William the Conqueror uh, from Normandy. You know, whether you kill uh, Genghis Khan or, you know, whatever other horrible uh, historical figure, it's it's only a matter of time before some other crazed madman rises to power and destroys All right. people. I've got it. We go back to the date of creation and we kill Adam and Eve, <laughs> and then we don't have to worry about any of the problems. There you go. Hey, uh, thanks, Stephen in Ohio. Appreciate hearing yeah. from you tonight. 855-450 free. We've got Tom in Detroit. You're on Free Talk Live. Tom, with Ian, Ellen, and Daryl. Hey, you got to listen on the phone. Otherwise, it sounds like you're listening on the radio, and then we have to wait for you to pick up the phone. I'm here. I'm okay, here. there you are. I'm here. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was, uh, yeah. Anyway, yeah, I, I caught your uh, topic tonight, and, you know, I called in the other night basically about the same thing. When is it time for us to actually pick up arms and defend ourselves? And, uh, you know, I, I know we, we can't wait until it's too late. I mean, you look at this thing going on in, in uh, uh, Nevada with Clive Bundy, and I listened to uh, Rush's show, you know, just I don't, I'm not at all – what you guys would consider a conservative. I think I'm conservative, but in my financial ways, but I'm not a conservative Republican at all. I'm not, I'm like you, Ian, I don't believe in government whatsoever, but you know, you, you see this, the uh, uh, Bureau of land management has more control, has control over more property, more land than Germany, France, and Italy combined. And they have no, and, and we don't elect them. Nobody is at, at uh, you know, uh, what do you want to call it, that? It, responsible. I mean, it's crazy. They've got their own army. I mean, so what are you saying? We... Are you suggesting that people should go and start slaughtering BLM uh, employees? Well, of course, I can't say that. You know, I mean, the, the bottom line is I think it's, it's, it's time for, for something. Something what, besides. What do you want to see? I mean, what is it that you're, what is your vision, your violent vision? Well, you know, I used to I used to listen to this guy who's now in prison, and he was on the radio quite a bit. Oh, that's he was a good sign. Pretty far out there. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. yeah and he was, Who was he, in prison because. Pardon me. Who? Uh, I can't think of his name right now. He he was on the radio quite a bit. He was on the internet a lot. He was a really uh, right wing hate guy. Okay. And all he said was that. The, they passed those laws in Chicago, taking the arms away from. I mean, these pe- people in these large cities have no way to protect themselves, and they picked him up for threatening judges. And all he said was, "They should be killed." He never said to do it. He never. Aren't said Aren't you no. talking about white supremacist uh, FBI informant Hal Turner? Yes, I am, and I was very disappointed when I read that. Believe me, because I used to listen to him and have at least some. Some moniker. I mean, this guy was despicable from top to bottom. Uh, I mean, uh, just a a sick white supremacist a hole. And I'm sorry to hear that uh, that you spent any time listening to that character. And just the fact that he was uh, put in a uh, prison cell because advocating for the killing of judges should show you that violence is probably not going to be a particularly productive solution. I, I, I totally understand that. It's going to be a suicide solution at the bed first, for sure. But well, well, what, what do you think is going to come out of it then? I mean, if you're admitting that it's a suicide run, what's the point? At first, I said at first. I, I believe at this point right now, as I, you guys know, or I've said I'm from Germany, okay? I, I have history there. I'm old enough, and my family has been there for the entire forever. I mean, I'm from Germany, period. I was born there. And when you see... Over and over, our history has proven that this just keeps happening. Man, if we don't nip it in the bud somehow, I, I don't know. I don't know how. I don't know what to say. I. I but if violence just, is your means, even if you're successful for you know for a period of time at you know killing off some government bureaucrats and avoiding capture and avoiding being killed in response, which of course will happen to most people that try this particular plan, 
Uh, even if you are successful at killing enough government bureaucrats, you've sown the seeds of the ground. Uh, you know, you've sown the seeds of blood into the ground. Your means have been violent, and so the ends will not be, be anything but violent. Uh, the you know the the sea, the halls of power will still be there. It will still attract corrupt people who seek to to control others, who seek power over others. And you're just going to have another violent government in place to replace the one that you've taken out. The violence can't lead to peace, Tom. And good luck with it. Thank you for the call tonight. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. I realize that doesn't make the decision any easier, what we're talking about. There's a treasure hunt going on at mathgate.info, a Bitcoin treasure hunt. You can find Bitcoins by proving theorems. So learn some logic, do some math, find some Bitcoins. Even better, mathgate.info is designed to be used anonymously. So connect to mathgate.info through Tor, prove some theorems, find some anonymous Bitcoins. Don't wait. Others are already searching for the Bitcoins. Go to mathgate.info today and join the treasure hunt. There are anonymous Bitcoins to be had for the taking at mathgate.info. Inventory isn't about products, kid. It's about money. Products sitting on shelves is money sitting on shelves. I hate overstock. I hate understock. I hate wasting time. I hate wasting money. That's why I love Granger. Granger Keep Stock Solutions help us manage our facility's inventory so we have exactly what we need when we need it. No more, no less. It's inventory management my way. Get it? Got it? Good. Visit Granger.com slash Keepstock for more information. Granger for the ones who get it done. You've been lied to. Lied to by Washington politicians and the Wall Street propaganda machine. My name is Brett Kitchen, best-selling author, and I want to give you free access to my new DVD set, The Millionaire Black Box. Because after losing 35% in my IRA in the crash years ago, I said enough. And since then, I've filmed interviews with dozens of millionaires across the country. I was shocked to discover they don't use mutual funds or worry about stock market crashes. They make double digits in good years and bad. Call now to get this DVD where millionaires reveal five specific wealth strategies like private lending contracts, how to use your IRAs or cash in the bank to make potential double digits each year, tax-free retirement income using the biggest benefits left in the tax code, and how to beat inflation with two strategies you'll never hear from Wall Street. Call 1-800-324-3030 to get free access to the Millionaire Black Box videos and learn the secrets the ultra-rich use to grow your money and protect your wealth. Plus, the next 47 callers get a free copy of my best-selling book, Safe Money Millionaire. Just cover shipping and handling. Call 800-324-3030. Again, that's 1-800-324-3030. 1-800-324-3030. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on, joined the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Meowbit is free software from the Freedom Fiends that allows you to effortlessly view .bit websites. Meowbit works on all browsers. .bit is a new type of web address that's not controlled by any government or corporation. And we'll show you how to register a .bit domain today using a few cents worth of Namecoin. If anyone ever shuts down your .com website, users will still be able to get to your site using your .bit address in our free software, Meowbit. Go to meowbit.com. That's M-E-O-W-B-I-T dot com. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. The 
This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up whatever you'd like. Just dial toll-free to 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And we've got Skype. Skype on into the show at username lrn.fm. Uh, and don't forget that if you love Bitcoins, you really should check out MathGate at MathGate.info. It's a Bitcoin theorem-proving treasure hunt going on at MathGate.info. You can find Bitcoins by proving theorems. Now, I have no idea how you prove a theorem, so I'm not a good prospect for uh, for MathGate.info. But if you are a math-oriented person and uh, you know how to do theorems, you can learn some logic, do some math, and you can find Bitcoins. I mean, this is the best math deal ever. Like, you never got Bitcoins for doing math in high school. Boy, can you imagine how more, much more uh, kids would be interested in doing math if you could get Bitcoins for getting the problems correct? That's what I was actually going to suggest. Anybody that is homeschooling or unschooling and you have a high school-aged student and they're learning the calculuses, have them go to this. I went to the website and I am pretty good at math. And all of these things were way over my head. <laughs> so you got to know your stuff, I guess. But uh, connect to MathGate uh, through Tor if you want. You can go to MathGate.info, and then you can prove your theorems and find anonymous Bitcoins. Don't wait. Others are already searching for those Bitcoins. So go to MathGate.info today and join the treasure hunt. Uh, we continue here. And I've got a little bit more about this white supremacist scumbag uh, talk show host, Hal Turner, who we've talked about in the past, it's been a few years, but uh, since he got brought up tonight, might as well inform our listeners a little bit further on who this character is. Also, still to come, four more of the six reasons why somebody who's author an author over at libertarianism.org claims that libertarians should dump the non-aggression principle. Let's go first, though, to Abel calling from New Hampshire. You're on Free Talk Live via Skype. Hey, Abel. Howdy. Can Welcome. you hear me all right? Yes, yeah. go ahead, sir. Oh, that's great. Um... Well, uh, you know what? The, you, you guys came up with a definition of uh, pollution. I thought it was a bit limited. I actually think that uh, pollution ought to be defined as the uh, acts and actions beyond which human activity, because human activity is part of nature, no? Sure. <laughs> you know, so what humans produce generally should not be considered pollution uh you know we're we're with our abilities and what have you our intelligence and our you know work ethic and cooperation and whatever we're able to you know often produce things that are not good uh and carbon di dioxide is not one of them <laughs> just just to make a point, uh, but uh, the fact is, is that there, uh, uh, you know, that, that that there are things that that you know, where you're you're pouring poisons into rivers, or you're, you know, which has happened, which has occurred. Almost all of that has occurred in the realm of of corporate entities, you know, with the corporate privilege defended by the state. And, uh, I mean, you know, this whole six things, you know, kind of so far, the two things that they brought up remind me of statism light, you know, oh, we can't, we can't honor the, uh, uh, the non-aggression principle because, you know, and, and I'm just thinking, well, you know, the things that, that has to to happen are are part of humanity. I say is that 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 we are human first before we're uh, taking on principles. And once we are human, we uh, have a sense of community, a sense of society, uh, an interest in cooperation. You know, we have a whole bunch of things. You know, we're we're social beings mostly, uh, and and so once we've you know. We we agree with that, then then we can apply the non-aggression principle and and do it judiciously so that we're not retaliating in you know you know wild and drastic ways. I mean, we are not hopefully uh, 
creating a, a society of children. We're creating a society of enlightened adults. I mean, we are maybe we're not very successful at it so much lately. Well, what we have now is a society of children, right? I mean, the, the existing sta status quo encourages people to stay childlike for as long as possible and ultimately, you know, dumbs down society. The government school system, for instance, uh, is right. designed to dumb but people down. I, I think I, I understand what he's saying. By virtue of the fact that we're human beings, we function mostly based on our rational thought processes. And if that eventually leads to, like, a technological society that we have today, like, we're obviously going to be producing pollution along with all of the added benefits of having the modern-day conveniences that we have. And that's not necessarily aggression. That's just a, a natural consequence of, you know, being productive and prosperous. Well, I didn't really weigh in earlier when y'all were discussing pollution. My definition of it would be... A uh, essentially a property encroachment uh, in that it's an unwanted p uh, property encroachment. So whether it's somebody pouring some sort of chemical into a stream that goes through my property, or uh, pu you know pushing smoke into the the air that's on my property, or just parking an old vehicle on my property that I didn't ask for, I think any of those things would be considered a pollutant if they were unwanted. What about noise uh pollution? That absolutely could be considered, an, I think, an aggression because you know those are actually sound waves that are that are hitting you. Uh, right. That could be very, very and, and, annoying. And you know, it's it's been shown that that the nature of sound can be destructive. Uh, I, there's no doubt about that. You can it can be damaging, not just just disruptive. I mean, above a certain decibel level, it can it I can said, harm you. I said destructive. Oh, I'm sorry, I mis, uh, misunderstood. <laughs> so yeah, you can not but only no, be harmed I, I, by it. I'm agreeing with everybody here. I think that's great. I, you know, like I say, I, I think what, what's being produced by these, I, you know, and I've only gotten the first two. I was trying to dig up the, the link for that. I couldn't find it. Oh, the, the article Daryl's been reading? Right. It Did has been it? shared on the Facebooks, the Twitters, the Google Pluses. Yeah, yes. I'm on Facebook on, on Free Talk Live, and, and I would have thought it would have been one of the top. Uh, it's you know, there. It got shared about an hour and a half oh, ago. Posted at 738. If you go to facebook.freetalklive.com, it should take you to the right page. Maybe you're on an imposter Free Talk Live <laughs> page. Those things might exist. Thanks, yeah. Abel, for the call tonight, man. I appreciate it. Uh, Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Let's go to Nathan. He is in Texas. Nathan, you're on Free Talk Live, also via Skype. Go ahead. Nathan in Texas, going once. Hey, Ian. Hello there. Uh, so uh, uh, about the uh, the article you were reading, uh, after you read the second point, I was pretty sure that this is ripped straight from David Friedman's book, uh, The Machinery of Freedom. Hmm. I don't because think so. in that book, in that book, he talks about a consequentialist um, presentation of libertarian ideas, and he brings up a lot of these points, like uh, you know, can the NAP be considered an absolute moral rule? And, you know, what about if I, uh, you know, if I pollute, then do you have to get permission from everyone on the block to, uh, you know, burn your fireplace and, you know, things of that nature. But the difference is that David Friedman, he also admits that he has a moral, he kind of has a moral inclination toward liberty. Whereas it, I kind of, it's kind of sounds like the author of that piece is he's kind of looking for an excuse. Like, you know, well, what if in this strange situation, it would be okay to hurt people? You know what I mean? Mm hmm I've read that book, and uh, it wasn't one of my favorites, The Machinery of Freedom. It was pretty dry, pretty boring. Well, what I like about it is that he, he really addresses a lot of these concrete questions like, uh, uh, like for example, the chapter on Monopoly and, uh, you know, Robert Barron's and stuff. That really uh, helped me a lot because, you know, I've been, uh, been exposed to the kind of progressive view of the 19th century. Very good. Nathan, anything else you want to share tonight? Uh, well, I'd bet anything that the rest of the points on that list are also going to come straight out of that book. So it, they'll probably, they'll probably be things like, well, what if there was a, you know, a man who was being, you had to save someone and take them to the hospital. And the only way you could do that was by stealing a car. What then? You know, questions of that sort. Yeah. I think in a, in a case of something like that, if you're going to aggress against somebody, then you have to be willing to pay the cost. I mean, if you feel like taking this person to the hospital is worth T stealing someone's car, then prepare to pay whatever the price of 
being held responsible for stealing someone's car. You, that would be a, a situation in which you would decide that, and thanks for the call tonight, that it was that it would be worth it to face whatever those consequences might be to save this person's life. They mean that much to you. And the author of this article does mention David Friedman As an exactly once. All right, we'll come back to uh, the, the list. Four more to go on this list of six reasons why this guy says that libertarians should reject the non-aggression principle. We'll continue with that, and you can, of course, take control. Hour number three coming up here on Free Talk Live. you got to pay attention to the small things, kid. Small things matter. Small problems become big problems. Take a transformer. Rain leaks into a transformer. Insulation system breaks down. Insulation system breaks down. Copper windings overheat. Copper windings overheat. Transformer blows. Transformer blows. Facility goes dark. Facility goes dark. Kid, you don't want to know what happens next. That's why I use Granger. Granger helps keep small problems from turning into big problems. Get it? Got it? Good. Call, click Granger.com, or stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. Stop harming your body with coffee from grocery stores or most chains. Start making a difference one cup at a time. We've partnered with Camano Island Coffee Roasters to offer you a free pound of BuzzBox coffee. It's organic, so no harmful pesticides or toxins. Shade grown, meaning less acidity and no heartburn. Try the best of the best for free. Just cover shipping. 10% of future purchases go toward helping us give the gift of human freedom around the globe with at least 100 microloans via World Vision. Go to coffee freetalklive.com Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates. Online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Friday, April 18th, 2014. Gold opened today at $1,302. Silver opened at $19.65 while Bitcoin is trading at $474.17. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from GrowYourOwnGroceries.org, now offering an eight-week course where you can learn to treat the most common family ailments with simple medicines that you can grow or easily find. Learn more, GrowYourOwnGroceries.org. Support also comes from Bitmain Tech, creators of the newly released Antminer S2 Bitcoin Miner, one terahash and only 1,000 watts. Order yours online today, BitmainTech.com. And support comes from Affordable Sound, CD and DVD duplication, along with posters and promotions materials. Online, affordablesound.com, or give them a call, 512-459-5253. In the news, Senator Dianne Feinstein has stated that she is opening an investigation into how the McClatchy News Service obtained the classified conclusions of a Senate report into the CIA's use of torture. If someone distributed any part of this classified report, they broke the law and should be prosecuted, Feinstein said. The senator's statements come on the heels of McClatchy releasing the 20 conclusions of the Senate Intelligence Committee's report. Last week, the committee voted to send the conclusions in a 480-page summary to President Obama for declassification review. In an appearance on Russian TV, former NSA contractor Edward Snowden asked Russian President Vladimir Putin whether Russia engaged in mass spying of Russian citizens. Putin said Russia does not have as much money as they have in the United States and just doesn't have the technical devices that they have in the States. However, Russia has a surveillance system that has been described as prism on steroids, a reference to the NSA's data collection program. It's being called Google for the dark web. The Graham's search engine launched last week and is accessible only on the Tor browser. 
Wired reports the search engine is based on Google and can lead users to sites selling drugs, guns, fake identification, and other black market essentials. Before grams, such sites could only be found by users who knew the specific URL address. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Voice and Exit, maximizing human flourishing through radical innovation. Tickets on sale now. Get 10% off with promo code FREEDOM June 21st at Austin Music Hall. Get yours at voiceandexit.com. Support comes from the Corey Moore Show, live Friday nights, 9 o'clock central at coreymoreshow.com. And support comes from Roberts and Roberts Broker Jank, precious metals at reasonable rates since 1977. Online at rrbi.co. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, April 18th, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. The Easter holiday falls on Sunday, April 20th, abbreviated as 420, which is a common phrase used by marijuana users as a cue to ingest their drug of choice. Well, that fact has led a coalition of Christian leaders to call on the United States to end the war on drugs. Al Jazeera reports the coalition says that Jesus Christ was about challenging unjust systems that held marginalized communities in bondage, much the same way that the drug war disproportionately leads to the incarceration of minorities. On Wednesday, the Christian leaders called for a change in the drug war, pushing for the repeal of federal laws that criminalize low-level drug possession. At least 58 are dead and more than 100 wounded following an attack Thursday on a United Nations base in South Sudan. The base was being used to shelter thousands of displaced civilians. AFP reports that 48 bodies have been recovered from inside the base. They include children, women, and men. 350 armed youth are blamed for the attack. And Google has updated its terms of service to make it clear that incoming and outgoing emails are scanned and analyzed for advertising. The update states that Google scans the contents of emails being sent and received through any Gmail account. Google users' data from personal files, search history, YouTube views, and map requests to display relevant ads that they hope will lead to more clicks and thus more revenue. The practice has garnered criticism from privacy groups. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Central Texas Gunworks. CHL courses, self-defense training, and firearm sales. Give them a call, 512-731-3585 or online at centraltexasgunworks.com. And support comes from Cabo Bob's, Southwest Burritos with homemade tortillas. Online, cabobobs.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, April 18th, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting, reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. Shortly after accidentally clicking like on nearly 400 of his ex-girlfriend's Facebook photos earlier today, panicked area man Adam Nunsing spoke to Onion reporters about his mistake. Damn it, I, I was just looking at one of Rebecca's Instagram photos that showed up on my news feed, and the next thing I know, I just liked every single photo that she posted over the last four years. I, I didn't mean to, but it just kind of happened. The 28-year-old told reporters that he had browsed through 14 of his ex-girlfriend's photo albums while inadvertently clicking like on each and every picture, including dozens from her office picnic last fall, her trip to New York in 2010, and a photo of her and her first boyfriend from 2006. I thought if I went back and clicked unlike on all those pictures that maybe she wouldn't get any notifications. But then I saw some other albums and I ended up liking 80 more photos and shared them on my wall. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live, and we're launching into the third hour of the program. Of course, you're invited to bring up whatever you want. Toll free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And don't forget, we've got Skype. You can Skype in at username lrn.fm. So feel free to reach out in the way that works best for you. Throughout the show tonight, we've been kind of coming back to this list of six Reasons, according to some author at libertarianism.org, which I highly question. Matt Zwolinski. Highly question this man's uh, libertarian credibility. Uh, he is making arguments that maybe this whole non-aggression principle thing that the libertarians follow as their part of their basis of their viewpoint uh, it should be thrown out. He says it's, uh, it's, not, it's not good enough. But not in the same way that I say it's not good enough. I say it's not good enough because it doesn't go far enough. Uh, the non-aggression principle to me is problematic because it it doesn't 
it doesn't address peace as a means to the ends that we seek, which, and I don't want to speak for everybody here, but I'm going to try my best. We as liberty-minded people want to see a, a better uh, society, a world in which people are engaging in consensual behavior with one another, where people do not use aggressive force on one another. But I don't believe that we can get to that world by the use of violence. And so that's why I don't think the NAP or the non-aggression principle is good enough. But that's not the reason why he's going at it. He's coming at it from this utilitarian perspective thus far. One of the points was that, well, if if it turned out that we could help a bunch of children who are sick by taxing the richest 1% a small amount, what would be wrong with that? Wouldn't that be the right thing to do? And, of course, no, it would not be the right thing to do because you'd be using the threat of violence against those richest 1%. And I realize that that's a fairly popular position because... Few people like rich people, and so that's kind of the the wedge that the government has used for, you know, over a hundred years to convince people that taxes are fine. Oh, no, we're, we're going to have this income tax, but it's only going to be on the richest of, uh, of Americans, so you regular people, you don't have to worry about it. Well, that changed over time, didn't it? Yes. So, again, I think there's a real slippery slope concern here, and uh, Ellen and Daryl are joining me. So let's jump back into the list at number three. Number three, the non-aggression principle has an all-or-nothing attitude toward risk. The nap clearly implies that it's wrong for me to shoot you in the head, but to borrow an example from David Friedman, what if I merely run the risk of shooting you by putting one bullet into a six-shooter revolver, spinning the cylinder, aiming it at your head, and squeezing the trigger? What if, instead of one bullet, I put five? Of course, almost everything we do imposes some risk of harm on innocent persons. What is he saying here? Is he saying that, that under the non-aggression principle that doing that would be okay? Uh, he, well, he, he actually says that it's either okay or it's not okay. Well, I don't see how this applies because obviously you wouldn't point a gun at somebody's head that you knew was loaded, even if it was just one cartridge, unless you clearly wanted to shoot them. Right. That sounds pretty aggressive to me. What about driving on the highway? You run the risk of having a heart attack or getting distracted and causing an accident or when you fly in an airplane over populated areas, there's the risk that the airplane will crash, killing thousands or more. What does that have to do with uh, the, the non-aggression Yeah, principle? I don't think this point risk. is valid at all because pretty much everything you do in everyday life involves a, a certain amount of risk. Like you're always risking hurting somebody else or yourself. It's not that you – the thing – the non-aggression principle says that you can't like purposely with intent – Right, there's a difference Harm between somebody. an accident right. and, uh, you know, and, and violence. So he continues, most of us think that some of these risks are justifiable while others are not, and that the difference between them has something to do with the size and likelihood of the risk harm, the importance of the risky activity, and the availability and cost of less risky activities. But considerations like this carry some weight in the non-aggression principle's absolute prohibition on aggression. The principle seems compatible with only two possible rules. Either all risks are permissible or none are. <laughs> and neither of these seems sensible. Okay, so I guess an example of this might be uh, the idea of a guy tinkering with a pipe bomb in his garage versus someone tinkering with a nuclear device in their garage, right? The nuclear device clearly puts his neighbors at risk from uh, annihilation, whereas a pipe bomb is at worst probably just going to blow him up and his garage. So would that be an example of this? Like, you know, the, the activity is similar, the risk is different. How does this apply to the right, non-aggression Right, or me principle? walking around just flailing my arms with a closed fist, and if anybody happens to be in my path, they might get hit. <laughs> Most people would avoid that intentionally. Oh, this guy's a crazy man. He might hit me. I'm going to walk away. So am I putting people at risk, or am I not? He's saying that under the non-aggression principle, that either... That is just as acceptable as me trying to build a nuclear device in my basement, 
or neither of those things is acceptable. Well, hopefully, if you're building a nuclear device in your basement, you know what you're doing. Like, you don't want to hurt anybody else. Like, I mean, maybe that's what it's intended for in the end. If you're building a nuclear end. device in your basement, that may be an indicator that you don't know what you're doing. Well, maybe if you're going to use it for something like bombing a, a city, that I mean, that would obviously be a threat to other people. But if you're just building it for, say, maybe you want a nuclear reactor so that you can get an unlimited supply of energy. Mm-hmm. Like, hopefully, if you're doing this, you've set up enough security so that there's there's not going to be any accident. You know, you're not going to blow yourself up or the entire neighborhood. Right. But let, let's go back to one of the examples that he gives of driving down the interstate. Mm-hmm. You run the risk of having, you know some sort of distraction and causing an accident or something like that sure or you know he says heart attack you could you know have a bee fly into yeah. the window of your car and sting you in the eyeball yeah and you could then wind up causing a giant accident is your driving down the interstate knowing that you're putting hundreds or thousands of people at risk He's saying that either that's as acceptable as putting five bullets into a gun, spinning the barrel and pointing it at someone's head. It's ridiculous. Or neither one of those is an acceptable risk. One, one of those is a an absolute act of aggression, and you know it's clear that it's an act of aggression, whereas when you're driving from point A to point B, it wasn't your intention to cause an accident. Whereas if you put a bullet in a gun and spin the... Uh, revolver or whatever, and then you pull the trigger. It you know it's your intention to possibly blast somebody's splatter somebody's head. I mean that's because that's a realistic possibility. Right. Whereas most of the time when you travel from point A to point B, you know you're you're going to be fine. Everything's going to be okay. So number four on the list, he claims that the non-aggression principle does not have a prohibition on fraud. Says that libertarians usually say that violence may ju- may legitimately be legitimately be used to prevent either force or fraud, but according to the non-aggression principle, the only legitimate use of force is to prevent or punish the initiator of physical violence, and fraud is not physical violence. If I tell you that the painting you are about to buy is a genuine Renoir. And it's not. I have not physically aggressed against you. But if you buy it, it, find out it's fake and then send the police or some other agency to my house to get your money back, then you have aggressed against me. I think it is a form of aggression, though, even if it's not physical. Yes, fraud is, I, I would say it's a metaphorical form of aggression, but you're still... It's still aggression in the fact that you're getting something that's undeserved without the other person knowing about it. What do you think, Daryl, on this one? This is a, I think this is a pretty tough question. It is, and it also depends on which one of the many definitions of non-aggression principle you read. Because some do say you do not have a legitimate right to initiate force or fraud. Others do not include the words or fraud. We'll come back with more here. You're welcome to share your thoughts. Is fraud an aggression? 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Maybe he's right on this point. More coming up. This is Free Talk Live. Everybody wants to know, what can you buy with bitcoins? Isn't there like a bitcoin general store or something? Well, yes, now there is. And it's at bitcoingeneralstore.com. BitBrew and the Bees Brothers have teamed up to create a place where U.S. customers in the lower 48 can shop for, well, anything, with free shipping. What can you find at BitcoinGeneralStore.com? Bitcoin apparel, stickers, gifts, precious metals, physical bitcoins, coffee and honey, of course, and electronics and computer accessories. The folks at Bitcoin General Store are true Bitcoin believers who don't even use third-party payment processors. They get their inventory direct with Bitcoin and pass on the savings to you. Shop at BitcoinGeneralStore.com with confidence that you are supporting a real Bitcoin economy. you got to see what they have to offer. Visit BitcoinGeneralStore.com today. That's BitcoinGeneralStore.com. 
On the average, Americans work between 45 to 50 years, hoping to build up enough wealth to retire and live out their golden years. Unfortunately, with taxation, the rising cost of food, energy, housing, and medical, many retirees are forced to live below the poverty line. Is this a flaw free enterprise, or is our monetary unit we call the Federal Reserve Note forcing us into perpetual debt, ensuring inflation and higher taxes? These questions and more can be answered by reading G. Edward Griffin's book, The Creature from Jekyll Island. Congressman Ron Paul states it's what every American needs to know about central bank power. A gripping adventure into the secret world of international banking cartel. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. I will give a silver dollar from the early 1900s to anyone who purchases this book. Call 1-800-686-2237 and order a copy today. It's critical that the public be made aware of the system. Call and order your copy today at 1-800-686-2237. That's 1-800-686-2237. The push to legalize marijuana is gaining momentum. These prescription doobies will do a whole lot more than just give patients a case of the munchies. Proponents are piping up to say that medical marijuana can help patients with some of the chronic illnesses that have been majorly killing their buzz. Unfortunately, 36 U.S. states are still not a kind bud of the legalization argument. But in states that do have the plan, the results have been, well, pretty far out, man. Patients nationwide are bluntly asking state legislatures to finally mellow out so that they and their doctors can work jointly to stop the suffering that's making a hash of their lives. So it's clearly an issue that means a lot to these patients. So states shouldn't toke their time with this policy. We'd be upset if patients had to wait a bong time. This is the Onion News Network. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the Internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. There's a treasure hunt going on at mathgate.info, a Bitcoin treasure hunt. You can find Bitcoins by proving theorems. So learn some logic, do some math, find some Bitcoins. Even better, mathgate.info is designed to be used anonymously. So connect to mathgate.info through Tor, prove some theorems, find some anonymous Bitcoins. Don't wait. Others are already searching for the Bitcoins. Go to mathgate.info today and join the treasure hunt. There are anonymous Bitcoins to be had for the taking at mathgate.info. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Plenty of time for your call and thoughts. If you make it now, you may dial in toll-free and bring up whatever you want. The number here brought to you by ProXPN is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. The Porcupine Freedom Festival is coming up, and it's going to be happening. We're about two months away at this point. It is not too late for you to get tickets. You can go to porkfest.com, P-O-R-C-F-E-S-T.com. You can go there and grab your tickets for this uh, 11th annual Porcupine Freedom Festival. It's a great excuse to come up here to New Hampshire and get a feel for what it's like to be around hundreds of other people who actually understand what freedom is all about. Uh, really, if you've never been to the Porcupine Freedom Festival before, you really should go ahead and check it out. The price is all of 60 bucks. That gets you in for the entire week. It's Sunday through Sunday, the 22nd of June through the 29th of June. And if you can't come up for the whole week, come up for the weekend or come up for whatever portion of the Porcupine Freedom Festival that you can come for because it'll be worth it. It's awesome to be around people who actually understand freedom. There's all kinds of interesting presentations and uh, exciting events happening. There's music. There's what are you most looking forward to? You know what? I just love being at Pork Fest. I don't think there's anything in particular this year. I think it's going to be fun to have the big gay dance party at nighttime at night. this year. So I think that's going to be cool. I think the big gay dance party is usually a lot of fun for me. I, I enjoy that. 
Although I'll probably have to take a night off from the show in order to attend it now that it's at night. And they're actually having two cook-offs this year. Oh, okay, cool. They've got the one-pot cook-off that they've been doing for a long time and something new called Brunch Fest where they're having people. Wow. It's not limited to what you can cook in one pot. So you can hmm. make, you know, like a dish and you can bribe the judges. Now, Ellen, how many years have you gone to the Porcupine Freedom Festival now? Last year was my first year. First time. Are you going back? Yeah, I am. I am going this year for five days, I think. I have my own cool. campsite now, so I'm excited to go. What uh, What was it that was fun for you? What did you really like from last year? Oh, Your first everything. Year? <laughs> I mean, first of all, it was really amazing just to be able to go and see all of these speakers. And, you know, everybody, there's so many different... Um, like experts that give speeches and there's even uh, the events where people can come up from like just the peanut gallery and say whatever they want. I think, what was it? The soapbox idol. I really enjoyed that. I also enjoyed just being able to walk around and pretty much any person that you stop and talk to will be extremely friendly. Like I had nothing but good experiences there. And it was it was mostly just spending time around people that I had never met before and that shared my like my same love for liberty that made it so enjoyable to me. Absolutely. It's really just amazing uh, to meet some of these people. And most of them are, by the way, first timers. So, uh, mo- so probably a very small amount of people compared to the full attendees last year. I think there were around fifteen hundred people that attended. I'm just taking a shot in the dark here based on the, the, the people that I saw and the numbers that uh, whenever I get up on stage at Porkfest, I always like to ask how many people are there for the first time. And it's almost always 70 to 80 percent of the audience. So it's really a great event because it attracts a bunch of new people to New Hampshire. They get to experience the community of what it's like to actually live nearby other people who love freedom. Now, it's only a week, but it sure is probably the best week of the year. It's just a lot of fun. It's 60 bucks right now if you go to porkfest.com and get registered. But there's a special sale coming up on Sunday. The 420 sale. Porkfest tickets will be 50 bucks on Sunday. 420. That's Easter Sunday. You got 1 day to get a special $10 discount on the Porcupine Freedom Festival tickets. After that, the price goes back up to uh to sixty dollars so if you want fifty dollar tickets mark your calendar and go and grab your tickets at porkfest.com this sunday april 20th we'll look forward to seeing you there i have confirmed free talk live will be broadcasting live every single night from the porcupine freedom festival we'll also have the lrn.fm media room which means we're going to be featuring other great shows i haven't confirmed who all is going to be there yet i do know michael dean will be doing his overnight show so for people who are up late and partying at, at 1 o'clock in the morning, at 1 o'clock in the morning, uh, Monday through Thursday, Michael Dean's going to be broadcasting live, which is going to be a lot of fun. That's going to bring a bit of a different uh, feel to the overnights at Porkfest. My guess is Angel Clark will most likely be there as well. I think she well. intends to go. I haven't confirmed that yet. I don't want to go out on a limb and confirm anybody else at this moment, but usually there are several great liberty or I, I know shows. that Conan is wanting to do an episode of Black Sheep Rising. Oh, bringing out the video equipment and setting up a studio. Very cool. So we'll be doing all that stuff and more. Go to porkfest.com to learn about the event. It's exciting. You should be there if you love freedom. If you can't make it this year, start planning for next year because this event is something you really don't want to miss. Let's jump back in, Daryl. We've got a few more. What, two more to go? Where are we at on this uh, list? Of- we're still on the what about fraud? Oh, right, right. We were talking about what is fraud, aggression. Uh, there's different definitions of the non-aggression principle. And uh, you know, the Syphase makes a good point online. He says that fraud could be classified as a form of theft, which most people would agree that theft is an act of aggression. Yes. Yeah, it certainly is. And like, I think there's two ways of looking at fraud. You can either put the blame on the person who committed the act or the person who was frauded. And, like, depending on how you view it, it's either aggression or not. But I'd say it, it's ridiculous to blame the per, the victim. Like, victim blaming, you can't say that if somebody robs your car that it's your fault. Like, there's things that you could have done maybe to prevent it, but ultimately it's the person who broke into your car that is at fault. And it's the same with fraud. Like, if somebody knowingly, like, takes your credit card number... That's that's, that's their fault. But now fraud, I mean, I think it could get a little more nebulous. So, Let, for instance. Let's say, for instance, that someone else starts a radio show called Free Talk Live. 
it's actually happened, as a matter of fact. Then and, if they present themselves as a completely separate radio program, yeah. then I would say that there is no fraud. However, if they start saying, you know, Free Talk Live, now with John and Bubba instead of Mark and Ian, mm -hmm. and start using, you know, promo material from this Free Talk Live. Use the logo. Use the logo. Try saying, you know, we're in the heavy hundred top 50 then you know they well, are definitely lie, committing then. fraud. Right, because then they'd be lying. They're not actually in the uh, the top fifty. That would be this free talk live. And it's interesting that you bring that up because, funny, we were talking about this other radio show host earlier in the program tonight, Hal Turner, who's a white supremacist, uh, basically a piece of trash. And turns out that Hal Turner was working for the FBI. But since you since you mentioned uh, somebody kind of using the name Free Talk Live to do a radio show. A few years back, there was actually some white supremacist group that started a show called Free Talk Live. And uh, the good news is it doesn't exist anymore because the guy who ran the show uh, murdered his girlfriend and then killed himself. Well, that's I mean, not, it's not good news. It's, good, it's not good that he murdered his girlfriend, but um, he's dead now, so the show's over. But nonetheless, you know, it was one of those things where if, if, you're, if you were searching for Free Talk Live on Google, we'd come up first. But if you kept going down the list, you'd find the, you know, the white supremacist uh, Free Talk Live. And that was pretty upsetting. But I decided that, you know, I'm not going to do anything about it. Whatever. It's, you know, freedom. Let them make their decision. We'll still be the most popular one. And we're the original, etc. So we're coming up here in moments. More about fraud as well. Uh, what about people selling like ripoffs, knockoffs? Uh, let's get into that. Eight fifty five. That's a genuine Polex. Eight fifty five four fifty. Freeze the toll free number. This is Free Talk Live. If you owe the IRS back taxes, listen carefully. Sweeping changes to IRS policies will help more people than ever eliminate their tax debts once and for all. And now I can help you reduce or eliminate your tax debts and end your tax nightmare. Hi, I'm Dan Pilla. I've helped thousands of people reduce and eliminate tax debts they couldn't pay. And after more than 30 years of experience dealing with the IRS, I can tell you there's no such thing as a hopeless tax case. And with the IRS's new policies, it's easier than ever to put your tax debt behind you once and for all. Call now at 800-346-6829 to learn how I can help you. You know your IRS debt will not go away by itself, but you don't have to live in fear anymore. Call 800-346-6829. Learn how I can help you eliminate wage and bank levies, release tax liens, and negotiate a settlement with the IRS that will put your tax nightmare behind you forever. Call 800-34-NO-TAX or go to TaxHelpOnline.com. That's TaxHelpOnline.com. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. Free speech is protected on the Internet, right? Not always. Government agencies try to limit free speech and commerce on the net. Luckily, when they do, the Institute for Justice is there to defend your First Amendment right to free speech. IJ helped set the first federal precedent for internet free speech in 1999, and ever since has worked to prevent unconstitutional roadblocks in cyberspace. Visit our website today at ij.org. 
DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done. Get a great deal. And a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Hey guys, Mark Claire here, lionsofliberty.com, where we strive to advance the ideas of liberty daily. We bring you the morning roar. That's right, every Monday to Friday, we'll have a brand new edition of the morning roar, where we provide a roundup of some news stories that you may not find in the mainstream media or even in your typical social media news feed. We find stories that relate to the ideas of liberty and provide you with our liberty perspective on them. Every Monday, we have our longest-running feature, Mondays with Murray, named after the great libertarian Murray Rothbard, where we'll examine an article or an excerpt from his works and help convey his view, along with our little spin as well. We wrap it all up every Friday with Felony Friday, where our own John Odermatt goes out and takes a look at some sort of felony. There's felonies committed every day, you know, whether it's a felony committed by the police, a politician, or even an average citizen. You can find all of this and so much more over at lionsofliberty.com. Advancing the ideas of liberty daily. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Take control of the airwaves and do it toll free here. 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype. You can Skype into the show. Username there is lrn.fm. Send a contact request first. If you haven't done that already, you'll need to do that before you can call us. But that's a very simple process and we'll accept you. Talking about the door devil. I mentioned it earlier in the show tonight. It is a, a very important product. If you care about security of your home. If you've taken the time to put in an alarm system, you really should consider the door devil, which will cost you all of about 60 bucks and will permanently reinforce your door, which is the very place that burglars are statistically most likely to attack. Alarms essentially funnel burglars to the doors because window sensors are typically set to trip immediately. Thus, the door, which has a delay, as you you probably know if you've used an alarm system, you can open the door and then go to the little punch pad. You get a a couple, like a minute or whatever or two to punch in your code, which means that that's the lowest risk target for entry for any criminals. So they kick your door in, then they've got two minutes to just grab a bunch of stuff and run out before the alarm goes off. Well, Door Devil can help you with that. It actually uh, shores up your door, and uh, we've got one installed at the uh, LRN.FM studios. It's a great product. Uh, now, I'm not a handy person at all, so I didn't do the installation, uh, but it's not a complicated installation, and my handy handyman said that he was really impressed with it. So you can go to DoorDevil.com and grab yourself a Door Devil or more than one. Uh, the price is right, and it'll help keep uh, it'll help keep some damage from being done to your property. Door Devil. Dot com. And even if they do manage to smash your door in with the door devil, it'll still make it a lot more difficult for them to actually get into and out of your home at that point. Because then they have to climb through basically a, a smashed up door at that point. So this thing uh, seems like it's a really good product. Doordevil.com. Our toll-free number here tonight, 855-450-FREE. That's the, uh, the number. We're continuing the discussion about fraud at the moment. The larger topic is this article from libertarianism.org, which I question why it's even showing up on a site by that name. Uh, but apparently, there's some sort of rebuttal article or two or three that has been posted. So maybe there are multiple bloggers there and they don't all agree. But uh, the, the question is about fraud and whether or not that is aggression is fraud covered in the non-aggression principle and i think to another degree this sort of touches on the whole thing of intellectual property and a lot of libertarians that i know don't necessarily agree with the current setup of intellectual property i sure don't i don't agree with the whole idea of it you know, everything that I put out is either under a 
Creative Commons license or under copyright. You, as a publisher of actual printed material, which yes. is one of the things you do over on your website, fpp.cc. So copyright meaning meaning that I claim no ownership over it. Uh, put it out with a little tag that says. Copying is an act of love. Love is not subject to law. Is that your thing? Did you come up with copy hard or somebody I else? I wish you? that I could say that I came up with that. Mm-hmm. It was actually Nina Paley. Who is that? Uh, from Question Copyright. She has mm-hmm. a comic strip that I cannot remember the name of off the top of my head. Okay. But there's a neat little YouTube video called Copying is Not Theft that Nina put out. And uh, on a quick side note, I actually downloaded that video and uploaded it to my YouTube channel, and it got flagged for (laughs) violating YouTube's copyright. Wow. And it actually wasn't her account that flagged it. It was a totally different third party Hmm. that was not involved at all with the making of the video. So I sent a uh, thing saying, you know, like, the title of this video is Copying is Not Theft. I'm sharing it for educational purposes. And then it was, oh, yeah, okay, that's fine. But so to let's say, for instance, that someone takes one of the books that I have published and they, you know, retype every word that I wrote in the book and they redesign a book cover and put it out that they were the author of Duopoly, How the Republicrats Control the Electoral Process. Would that be fraud? I would say that's somewhat fraudulent. What do you think, Ellen? If you're copying someone's work and claiming that you're the one that did it? Yes. Uh, I don't know. This word is... for word? Word for word. Yeah, I would say that's No fraud. changes. Word for word. Yeah, I, w- I would say that is fraudulent because that's somebody else's work. Like, they actually were the ones that spelled out all those exact words. They were the ones that created that exact book. Now, if you were to alter it, then maybe it it wouldn't be as fraudulent. Like, I would still say that's that's kind of a scummy thing to do. Like, you just wouldn't do that if you were a decent person. But if you're the one that actually created something and then somebody else is trying to take credit for it, like the same exact thing, then I, I would say that is fraudulent. I mean, if if they're creating their own content and just like calling it the same thing, that in itself wouldn't be fraud. Now, because- it, it wouldn't be fraud if they just took your word for word and then simply reprinted that as I'm going to publish Daryl Perry's Duopoly right. book. It still says Daryl Perry is the author on it, but Daryl Perry doesn't get a dime from the sales. That yeah, that's would not, fine. That would if, not right. be fraud. That's if you copying. want to go down so, to you know FedEx Kinkos or Staples and run off copies at yeah. whatever price they're going to charge you, well, maybe and I could scan in pages. Bind it up. Yeah. yeah, you know, like if you want to go through the trouble of reselling my book in a way that I don't get money. Yeah, okay, whatever. I don't care. Right. That's not what we're talking about. Though. Right. But if you, you know, and for the most part, I probably wouldn't say, you know, you owe me damages. It would be like, so how many copies did you sell? How much did you make? All right, give me half because you totally committed fraud. You know, you know, compensate me for something. Right. I think there's a difference between spreading ideas and actually trying to take the product of someone else's labor. Like, the, there's a huge difference there. Like, if you're just trying to get the word out about Daryl Perry, that's different yeah. than saying that you are Daryl Perry. Right. Let's go on. So, number five, uh, he claims that the non-aggression principle has a parasitic theory on property. Hmm. Says, even if the nap is correct, it cannot serve as a fundamental principle of libertarian ethics because its meaning and normative force are entirely parasitic on the underlying theory of property. Now, before I continue, I just want to say that he seems to think that all libertarians are propertarians, when in fact they are not. What does this all mean? Propertarian meaning someone who holds the idea of property above all else. Okay. Most people that are propertarians will not consider themselves propertarians. But when they t- 
talk about things, you can definitely tell that that's what they're insinuating. Hmm. So he says, suppose that A walks across an empty field where B jumps out of the bushes and clubs A on the head. It certainly looks like B is the aggressing party against A in this case, but on the libertarian view, whether this is so depends entirely on the relevant property rights, specifically who owns the field. Yeah. If it is B's field and A was crossing without B's consent, then A this was the absurd. one who actually aggressed against B, thus aggression... This, this is the libertarian – I don't know if libertarian – I've heard this new term, libertarian brutalist, and I don't really know how it's been defined, but I think this may be uh, part of it, where there's a certain uh, segment of libertarians who believe that, aha, you've, you've crossed onto my property line. Now I may shoot you or club you. Th those this, would be propertarians. Okay. Uh, that's ridiculous. Um, the kind of the standard, as I understand it, is that you cannot use more than a amount of force that is necessary to repel the individual. So the proper and reasonable. Thing, the appropriate thing to do would be to say, "Excuse me, sir, you're on uh, my property, and I would prefer if you leave. Please leave." Rather than jumping straight to the clubbing, uh, there's more coming up here in moments at 855 450 free. So he's just taking the, some of this to the point of absurdity. 855 450 3733. But I do get his point that the non aggression principle doesn't address some of these subtleties. And that's true. It's Free Talk Live. I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact in helping make a difference in the world and one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends to prove just how good it is we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience all you do is cover shipping go to coffee.freetalklive.com buzzbox coffee is organic so it contains no pesticides or toxins it's shade grown so less acidity and no heartburn it's top one percent arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com Uncover a simple privacy loophole that can stop the NSA spying thugs in their tracks at privacylockdown.com. The NSA has already shut down hundreds of sites, and to truth be told, they could shut down this operation at any time. See, the privacy loophole I'm about to show you allows you to make all your sensitive information disappear in the next 30 days or less. Go to privacylockdown.com now to take your life off the grid and see the loophole in the NSA and FBI spying machine before they close the loophole forever. Go to privacylockdown.com. It's already too late. Criminals have kicked in your door and are now in your home. Before this happens, homeowners have a choice. One, do nothing and hope you aren't one of the 1.4 million families attacked each year. Or two, refuse to be a victim. And for as low as $59, reinforce your doors with door devils. Door devils simply attach to existing door frames and have proven to stop the biggest bad guys from kicking in doors. Read our police testimonials of real-life events at doordevil.com. Alarms don't stop kick-ins. We do. Doordevil.com. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, 
Buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. You're listening to the best liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. Moments remain here, but enough time for you with your call if you dial now, toll-free. To 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. And Skype in at username lrn.fm. Don't forget, you can get more of Ellen over at her website, alpshow.com, and Daryl at his website, fpp.cc. If you like what's happening here on Free Talk Live, you like the ideas of liberty being discussed on a nightly basis on hun- over 100 radio stations, coast to coast, plus the internet. We've got a bunch of uh, ways to listen, of course, internet, satellite, phone, webcam, radio, all over the place. If you like the idea of Free Talk Live being in people's ears, new people, people who don't know what the ideas of freedom are, who don't know what the non-aggression principle is, if you like what we're doing here, you value Free Talk Live, please become a Free Talk Live amplifier at amp.freetalklive.com. AMP stands for Advertise, Market, and Promote. It's a way for us to get Free Talk Live not only on more radio stations coast to coast, which we're at 145 right now, but also to bring new internet listeners on board with this show as well. So we're doing an AdWords campaign on Google right now. We're doing a fundraiser for that where if you become an amplifier, your AMP money is doubled. So if you become an amplifier for 5 bucks a month, which is the minimum amount, that's like doing it for 10 because we've got some generous contributors who are willing to put up that extra 5 bucks to match your $5. You do 10 bucks a month, it's like doing 20. So please become a Free Talk Live amplifier today and get perks like access to the AMP only call in lines, the AMP only podcast, and the brand new AMP only Facebook group which is, has been very, very popular since we started it. So some great perks involved, but most importantly, you're helping spread the ideas of freedom. Uh, it's very, very effective. Every five bucks that you give are, what, something like 20? We're paying 50 cents per click. So, you know, that's there's several clicks there that, uh, that you're going to get us if you, you, you know, pony up for this campaign. Of course, some of the money also goes to help pay Daryl to do affiliate relations work for us as well. So, yeah, 10, 10 clicks, I guess, for every 5 bucks. But because your $5 is doubled, it's like getting 20 uh, clicks on our website for every 5 bucks that you put in. And some of those clicks are going to turn into listeners. And some of those listeners are going to absorb and appreciate and really uh, like the ideas of freedom. So thank you for helping us with the AMP program at amp.freetalklive.com. Uh, let's continue on with the list here, Daryl. I feel like we might actually get through this thing. So These are there's, the six reasons why. Th- there's just a little bit more on number five, this, and then I'll go back over the list before okay. we do number six. All right, the six reasons why this author says the non-aggression principle isn't... Uh, why libertarians should reject yeah. the non-aggression principle. Uh, the... One number five was that the non-aggression principle is parasitic on a theory of property, and he says that aggression, in the libertarian view, doesn't really mean physical violence at all. It means a violation of my property rights. But if this is true, then the NAP's focus on aggression and violence is at best superfluous and at worst misleading. It is the enforcement of property rights, not the prohibition of a Aggression that is fundamental to libertarianism. And that's what I meant by saying that, you know, most people that hold this view are actually propertarians, meaning that, you know, they put the property rights above everything else. Well, wouldn't they also say that their body is their property? So therefore, it, it would count if you aggressed against their person? They would. But again, you know, if I accidentally wander onto your property 
and let's claim or you know pretend for a second that you're a propertarian and I don't realize that I have wandered off of the sidewalk yep. onto your property, then you know, a propertarian or libertarian brutalist is the term that you had used earlier would then feel completely justified in coming out and beating me to death. I think that's completely unreasonable. Like it would yes. be aggression because that's you're responding in something that's unreasonably over the top. Like they just wandered onto your property. It's not as if they smashed your window. Like you're just still aggression. It would only be reasonable if you responded <laughs> with the same amount of urgency as the situation demanded. Like right. if if you go out and shoot a person that's walking on your lawn, like that's obviously too much of a response. That that is initiation of force. It's obvious to us, but apparently to some people it's not so right. obvious. It just seems like it would be common sense. So before we get to number six, okay. let's go back over one through five. All right. Uh, the first one is that the non-aggression principle prohibits all forms of pollution, that it prohibits small harms for the sake of larger benefits. There is an all-or-nothing attitude towards risk. There is no prohibition on fraud, according to this author, and that there is a parasitic theory on property. And number six, Ian, just think about the children. For one second, think about the children. It's one thing to say that aggression against others is wrong. It's quite another to say that it's the only thing that is wrong or the only wrong that is properly subject to prevention or rectification by force. But taken to its consistent extreme, as Murray Rothbard once took it, the nap implies that there is nothing wrong with allowing your three-year-old son to starve to death as long as you did not forcibly prevent him from a obtaining his own food. Or at least it implies that that would be wrong for others to, say, trespass onto your property in order to give your child food. Mm. I think he's got a point there, and uh, and I think he he does make a few points in this article. I don't agree with all of them, but I, I think he makes a few points that show the failing of the non-aggression principle. I mean, what would you say to that one about the the example of the kid, the child, the three year old? Yeah, I, I I don't really know how to answer it because this just seems like one of those completely asinine sort of objections that people throw out, sort of like the mythical objection that people throw out hold on yeah. that say if we legalize drugs then there's going to be three-year-olds standing on the street corner holding ak-47 selling crack at two o'clock in the morning i've never heard that one but uh but i've certainly heard some of the you know the heroin vending machines and they are going to come out with a, a marijuana vending machine in denver so that maybe takes bitcoin some, yes uh, maybe there's something to that but uh, to say that you know Somehow you would be committing an act of aggression by trying to feed someone's child <laughs> is completely asinine. Well, okay, but I, I get what he's saying, though, is that the – he's not saying that. He's saying that the non-aggression principle – uh, the, the people that are the total adherents to, those, say, the propertarian view would say that, well, you can't come on my property to save my three-year-old from right. starvation. Right. He says it would be wrong for others to trespass onto your property to feed your child. By the viewpoint – not his viewpoint, but by the viewpoint of the propertarian, they would say that that would be wrong. And I get what he's saying there. Um, when it comes to – and you said this is a ridiculous example. It's not really. There have been examples of mothers – who've had a, a child and, like, left it in a garbage pail or something like that, you know, had a child and left it in the bathroom where, uh, you know, wherever they had the child. And so it's certainly not unheard of for uh, somebody with a child to simply abandon all responsibility. No, I'm not saying it. that abandon, abandoning a child is a ridiculous concept because I know that it yeah. happens. What I'm saying is ridiculous is that someone would – use force to prevent you from giving their child food. That would be ridiculous. Well, in essence, that would be committing force against the child, wouldn't it? Because they're preventing the child from living at that point if they're not letting somebody feed it. Like, if you choose to have a child, that's your responsibility. You can't just give it up. Well, I like, tend to agree with you. But the point he's making is that under the non... The, he's saying the non-aggression well, non doesn't address that. Well, it doesn't 
um, specifically, right. not not uh, directly anyway, but I would say that it it is a form of aggression if you're not allowing your child to eat. Like that's directly causing them to be sick and he's eventually saying, die. He's not saying that the, in this scenario that the person would not be allowing the child to eat. It's just that the person is not feeding the child. So in theory, if the three year old could open the refrigerator door and get into the refrigerator, right. then maybe it would be able to feed itself. Or if it could catch a lizard or something like that. Uh, I mean, so I, I agree that with or his point here. Or if it could here, climb a ladder and get the food, you know, dangling from the ceiling. His, I'm not preventing you from climbing the ladder. Yeah, his Just point, go ahead and climb. His point is that the non-aggression principle doesn't address this responsibility that we all, most everyone, believes parents have for the, the, their offspring. That which they create, we tend to believe that they have a responsibility to take care of. And he's saying, well, the non-aggression principle doesn't address that. And he's right. And, the, and I think there are several instances where the non-aggression principle is not enough for a good moral kind of societal interaction with other people right and i mean obviously it doesn't address it directly that you have responsibilities like if you're choosing to have a child that's obviously taking on a responsibility that you can't just give up like you can't allow something that is your responsibility to just die but it, it's just a starting point really that's and that's what I, think, I, I agree and he, he actually concludes by saying that libertarians are ingenious and i have no doubt that given sufficient time they can think up a host of ways to tweak tinker and contextualize the nap in a way that makes some progress in dealing with the problems i have raised we'll see you tomorrow night online in the meantime at freetalklive.com alpshow.com and fpp.cc later why did you move to the shire i moved here to the shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as i do I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. Immigrating to the Shire was easy. I was instantly plugged into a community of individuals who also care about peace, liberty, and justice and are willing to do something about it. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here. And I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire.